Welcome, welcome, welcome to Planning Face Syndicate. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. It is a wonderful night to talk about some Star Wars Unlimited. This is episode 27 from Planning Face Syndicate, and we are here to talk about all the new spoilers, especially my new favorite leader, Yoda. Cannot wait till he comes out uh, so I can start playing and building a mill deck with him. Not that I think we're going to do that, but Tanner might have a mill deck in, in mind. Um, we're also going to talk about some of the PQs tonight. We're still seeing Boba and Sabine dominate, so we'll, we'll probably go back to that conversation a little bit tonight. Um, it might not be anything we could do, and we just suffer it out until we hit uh, set three. But we're going to have that conversation a little bit uh, later when we go through some of the results. Also, I was in a PQ this weekend, so we'll kind of go over my list a little, little bit and kind of go through a rundown um, of what I did and how I ran. And we also, if that's not enough, we have, we, we're going to go through um some of the leaders because we only got four leaders left which means we have two more weeks of spoilers essentially before all the leaders are spoiled and we're going to look and see who's in the lead on who had the early predictions and then we have to decide how we're going to give jj extra points for being able to pick the most obscure random ass um leader ever and uh somehow calling it so we're gonna have a great episode tonight very excited let me bring in my co-host for tonight please Hold on, and let me bring my co-hosts in. Please welcome to the show, Mr. JJ. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing all right, man. Uh, I uh, unfortunately wasn't able to make uh, the Maryland GT uh, yesterday, uh, unfortunately. But um, excited to go over some of these spoilers because, man, did they drop some really great cards. And I'm just so excited for set three. Can't wait for that to come out because I'm itching to get some more games in. Awesome. Absolutely. Also, while joining the show is Mr. Benchwarmer himself. Alex, how are you tonight, sir? Oh, I'm doing okay. Kind of just barely got here from a little uh, weekly play out in Howell, but, you know, we're having fun uh, playing my Moff Gideon yellow deck, which is super, super silly. I love it. So I'm, I'm excited for these spoilers. Yeah, we got a whole lot in store for everybody tonight. So if you didn't know, this weekend I went uh, to a PQ in Chicago with my son, my uh, friend of ours that from locals, and my nephew, and then also like a whole bunch of other like regulars. So Matt Rice was there, uh, his brother Mike Rice. Um, we had Steve came in, Ryan, Damian, Gabe. Who was the other? Kyle. 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 Yep, Kyle was there. Oh man, John was there. Devin was there. There's just I, like so many locals. It was like we I went there and I was like, oh, hey, everybody. <laughs> like, And then I found out they had an Airbnb, which is probably a good thing we didn't stay just because like I had my nephew and I don't want to crimp whatever people want to do and make it weird for people. But they all had an Airbnb. We got a hotel room. Um, I got it. We got actually, we got upgraded. It was great. We, like we went to this Marriott and we got up. They like they go. Yeah, we're going to upgrade you to the, the dual suite room. And I was like, mm, does it cost me more money? And they're like, no, 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 don't worry about it. I was like, all right, cool. I'll take it. So me and my nephew got a room and then my son and um, Gabe got a second room. Uh, so that was kind of like it just worked out really well. And it was pretty cheap for comparatively uh, for the night. So we went out there early. We ate at the hotel. They had a really nice uh, downstairs burger place. Um, very expensive whiskey drinks. though. holy crap was that? It was like a $14 glass of of whiskey so i was like oh i'll have one thank you and then we went and i changed my deck like not the whole thing but i changed parts of my deck seven times that day so just like i just i, I pulled things in put it out and i was like super nervous and then finally after having a couple of glasses of whiskey and a big burger i just said screw the world and i'm just gonna do this list and call it a day um so yeah and then we had to get up early to go over there. Um, so it was a good thing we slept. I actually got almost eight hours of sleep. Uh, I was woken up by my sons in the morning. Uh, they <laughs> left their hotel room key in the um, hotel room and they went to get breakfast and never, um, they couldn't get back in. So here, here's, here's, Ta uh, this is Tanner. I've got my earplugs in because I didn't know, like, the one of them said they were going to snore. They got my earplugs in. I've got the air running. I've got a fan next to my bed that I carry. I have a little portable fan I carry when I travel. And then, like, there, so they're knocking on the door. They're calling my phone. I'm not answering. 
And finally, they must have hit the door loud enough. It got through the the sound barrier for my earplugs. I was like, man, why is housekeeping here at eight in the morning? This is ridiculous. I got up and they're like, how could you not hear us? And I was like, I had my earplugs in, guys. Like, what? How did you guys forget the hotel room key? They're both sitting there in plain view. But uh, yeah, so that was fun. Uh, I found out, by the way, uh, for these Star Wars ones, they probably don't give you a lunch break. Just so you know, I did. We didn't know that ahead of time. Uh, So that was super fun. We had breakfast at 8 a.m. And then we didn't eat until after the tournament at six o'clock, I think. So, oh, damn. I had a little thing, of trail mix that we bought. I had some M&Ms, a couple of sodas. um, And that was that was about it. I felt bad for my nephew because, like, I don't think he normally has to go that long without eating. (laughs) You know, like I'm a big boy, I can handle it. I'm I'm a fat guy, so right, like it's not that big a deal. But I have a little bit of sugar, but <laughs> I felt bad. I didn't know what to tell him because like I was winning and I didn't want to like step out and miss something. And then, you know, but he doesn't he can't drive, he's too young. So <laughs> it didn't work out very well for us. But I think I think uh my my days playing X Wing tournaments have prepped me to always carry like snacks on me just because you know, situation like that happened where they're like, yeah, well, we're just going to play four games straight <laughs> and uh, and get out like at eight o'clock when you're there from like 10 in the morning. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was a fun weekend. Uh, we drove after the tournament. We drove back. Um, we drove back that night. So I got home about 11 o'clock. <laughs> um, so I'm very happy I didn't drive in the morning because Ryan actually drove from Zealand out to Chicago and back. And then he ended up making top four. So he had to stay for like an extra two hours on top of that and play in top four. Um, but he was running Sabine. So, I mean, he at least got to have a little bit of a break during the yeah. during the day, um, especially when you play a mirror match. Right. Like it goes pretty quickly. So. Sounds great. Sounds fun. Yeah. I wish I could have gone. I really do, but get tickets. Yeah, so hopefully they they do more of these uh, for set three, and we have uh, more of them around. Maybe in Michigan uh, would be nice, like at Eternal would be really nice. Um, I think Eternal's big enough to have that, so it would be nice if Eternal could at least get one, <laughs> so that it's not super far for me. Like the Chicago thing is just that it's a, it's like only like three hours, right? But it's that time change that just sucks. Um. I don't know. I don't like it because of the time change, but I like Detroit better and I have more friends over there. So <laughs> it's, it would have been a lot closer for a lot of us to just go to Detroit, but it didn't happen. So it was fun. And now I have concerts all week and then I have two concerts this weekend and then they're doing a showdown on Saturday and I'm debating on if I'm going to go to the showdown on Saturday. Now. <laughs> so which showdown? Uh, they have one at Sidekick in Grand Haven. So, okay. So you you should come out. It's that's far drive for you. That's farther than Zealand too, baby. Yeah. Um unfortunately, I th- I believe um RIW's is Saturday and then I'm running mine Sunday. So that's what I'm gonna end up doing. Yeah. No, I know. I know because I want to go to yours too, and we'll see. We'll see if the wife just let what she lets me do. Let's see. Probably not. I probably shouldn't even go to the Saturday one because I'm gonna be gone all of Thursday and all of Friday. <laughs> So, but we have two concerts. We were going to see KMFDM on Thursday, and then we're going to go see Pig Destroyer on Friday. And when Pig Destroyer comes around, you always go because they never come around ever. Like, and they almost never come to Michigan. So, like, this is a, a treat. KMFDM is just nice because I haven't seen them since like high school or right after high school, maybe something like that. I've seen them once. I may so. go see KMFDM. We'll see. Well, if you, hey, if you do, if you do, let me know. Like, let me know. We'll hang, we'll come, over, we'll hang out for uh, dinner beforehand or something like that. So, we'll see. You should. It'll be fun. But anyway, let's let's talk about. Let's go to the show. Let's actually do the show. So sorry. I mean, we <laughs> we went over. I, I haven't even gone over all of my stuff yet. But I wanted to kick the show off um, a little bit differently tonight. I don't want to just go into spoilers, and I don't want to go into PQ stuff. Um, I am anxious to talk a little bit about my play and some of that stuff. And I am a, a little bit anxious to talk about the, um, the Boba green list that kind of won and talk a little bit about like the play style was different. Um, that the guy played coming out of it. And so what I wanted to do is go over that a little bit. 
Um, but before we do that, we're gonna we're gonna kick we're gonna go back to our for a cause I believe in segment, which we haven't done in forever. This is our for fun segment. So I want to kick the show off a little different. I want to do something fun. You guys ready for that? Let's do it. All right. Anyway, so our for a cause, I believe in segment tonight, I wanted to go over kind of where we were at in reference to our different predictions. And then I want to go over, I made a couple of lists that I've been testing around with that are super fun. And I wanted to kind of go through those as well. Um, so Alex can make fun of my list and uh, tweak them. And then, then I'll go back and I'll win. I'll get, I'll get top 16 again after you tweak my list. But um Essentially, what I did is I went and highlighted anything that we had like predicted correct, which means we predicted the leader and the color correct. And then anything in yellow, um, I should deduct the point for Alex making me spell this caption, Rex. But um, <laughs> I put I gave everybody who had a, a, a thing in yellow um, one point. So that's basically you guess, you guess the correct leader, but just the wrong color. Um, so the top one, obviously, is... Uh, Dooku, we all got Dooku incorrect, right? So Dooku's blue. And I think the big thing here, right, is is it's we've got four units left. So we have a blue villain, a red hero, a yellow villain, and a yellow hero. Those are the only four leaders left. We're getting two of them next week, and then I'm assuming two more the week after, unless they're just going to be nice and give us all four next week, which just would be great. Um, but I doubt they'll do that. So... So far, Alex is in the lead with 19 points, JJ in second to a 17, and then I'm in third with 15, except for JJ somehow guessed Quinlan Voss. We don't know how. We have no idea how you were correct in this. Insider info, clearly. Like, that is definitely was not on my bingo card. And so, just so you know, so if, if JJ guesses Moral Evolve correctly, I don't care if it's the wrong color, JJ just wins. Like, we're done. Like, <laughs> I, I we're, can respect that. If we're, somehow we're, he gets Morello just out of nowhere. Yep. <laughs> You're we we you 100. You just so you know we've already agreed you win. Period. You guess you guess Morello Evol and you get it. That's off to you. <laughs> that would be amazing if that happens, man. Yeah. There's no way, right? Like absolutely the most obscure character. Yeah, Quinlan at least has a book and shows up in the Clone Wars. So, um, yeah. yeah. So we have four leaders left, right? So we have one villain blue. Um. So that leaves. Alex, you have Aurora Singh and I have Mother Talzin, but it could be any of these other ones that we've guessed too. Like, what's well, the probability Savage is is yeah is is blue? Probably very low, right? Like, I I would see that as a very low, um, low one. So we really only have three or two of them left: Mother Talzin or Aurora Singh. Do you guys have any guesses for what you think it's going to be? I I don't know anyone else. Okay. <laughs> All right. That was the problem. It's like I don't know much about Star Trek or Star Star Wars lore. Wow. A lot about that. <laughs> um, well, that's your problem right there. Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> Cisco. It's not really a villain though. Ducat. There you go. No. Uh, honestly, for me, I think uh, maybe getting maybe getting a tactical droid uh, leader uh, out there. Um, maybe Kraken or. Um, TV 94, uh, like one of the, the tactical droids that we've seen in the Clone Wars, could possibly be a leader that comes out, something to help boost uh, like the token droids a little bit more. Yeah, because I don't think we'll get like a cat, another Cad Bane, right? We can't get another Cad Bane. And why would we get another Thrawn? Yeah, I, don't, I just exactly. don't see us getting another Thrawn. And we did get Pre Vizsla this week. So, right, like Pre Vizsla is already knocked off the list. I guess we haven't spoiled that yet, but whatever. So, yeah, so I don't know. Um, unless we get a Darth Sidious, do you think we'll get a Darth Sidious? Or probably not. Um, Dark Plagueis? Mean, Chief Palpatine would, would be my guess for that, and which I already have on my list, but on the green. So well, he called the new gun, Ray. Yeah. I mean, I guess we all had it in different colors, but you got the blue. Yeah. You got, you did get, I, which is weird. Cause I don't, I never see new gun Ray as blue, but he's, he is uh, the next on my list of, of, of people to start building decks for. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, so I couldn't think of anybody else, but that was kind of I thought that was kind of funny. And then the next one is um a villain yellow. Uh we got Django Fett. What's the probability we get another bounty hunter? Right? Like like I mean, Sam we already Bosk. got Bosk. Who else would we even get out of the side of Aura Singer as a bounty I'm still hunter? Banking on Asajj. Yeah. And Asajj, Asajj could be that because technically Asajj is a bounty hunter. We did get Quinlan Voss in yellow. Maybe we'll get Asajj. Um, yeah. yeah. I would be. Asajj, Asajj is my bet, mainly because we've already seen a, um, uh, what is it? The, uh, I want to call it a black series card, but it's not um, that special card for her regular ground unit. And we've already seen exclusive. a leader come up them all. Yeah. The, the convention exclusive. Yeah. Um, and we, we have a leader Vader, we have a leader mall and it would make sense that that convention exclusive Asajj would also eventually get her own leader card eventually as well. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I, I agree. It's probably not Savage. It's probably it, logically, it sounds more like it would be an Asajj you know for it but um i'm waiting on that guy that looks like the terminator whose name i can never remember who looks like the Terminator? yeah there's a guy that looks like the terminator and he's a bounty hunter from the bounty series and he wasn't in an x-wing and i was really upset oh but he, uh, he just he's I silly but he doesn't yeah but uh yeah no i mean like i'm, I'm excited for for these new new reveals yeah. So these these are obviously these are who we have. I guess I didn't even I forgot I put this. These are the ones that we currently have. So Previsla is the new one, right? Um that came out and obviously Yoda. Um so I decided why not build a couple of decks? I can't test them per se really easily, but this I've decided I wanted to build a Wat Tambor droid one and then i wanted to build an ahsoka one um which this one's a little bit different because i have a few things in here but i try to go with a lot of the newer stuff um i want to know if that newer stuff if we're gonna if some of this is gonna be viable to just you just pick up one set and play out of it um so that's kind of was the test a little bit with with her and a little bit with this one um neither one of them have a lot of older um other sets in it this one has a few more uh because i have the I have the Kylo silencer just because it's an easy red fit. And of course, overwhelming barrage, because I don't think you can run a green villain deck without it. Um, <clears throat> but this was, this was, this was kind of my idea for like a, like a, a, a tempo aggro ish tempo type deck involving Watt, because essentially Watt says is that you can use an action to, if somebody, dies to give a friendly unit plus two plus two so you have a lot of lower flying units in this and then it kind of jumps um really high right and then the idea is is it gives you the fact that you could build battle droids um and build droids and then if they die they die like you can run them into something and give plus two to something else that was kind of the idea behind this so i don't know do you want me to go over the list what do you guys want to do you want to make fun of me? Yeah. I don't know if yeah, you guys looked at list. it. Yeah, definitely go over the list. All right. So, <clears throat> I don't know. JJ, I'll let you go over the list, JJ. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> brings your own list. It just doesn't go over I'm gonna make you. Right. I'm going to make you go over it. <laughs> I don't want to be the only one talking the whole time. All right. So, we got uh, a Rand Watt time board list here. We got three copies here of Obedient... Uh, Sorry, of uh, yeah, obedient Vanguard. Uh, three copies of the Kylo's Tie Sounder Silencers. I can't read today. Uh, three copies of the Confederate Couriers. Uh, three copies of Poggle the Lesser. Uh, two copies of the DOM Service Officers to Self Destructs. Uh, we got three copies here of Droid Deployment. Three Private Manufacturing. Uh, three copies of Super Laser Tech. And the guard wing leaders, uh, two copies of the Confederate Tri Fighters, uh, two uh, B1 attack platforms, which are awesome. I love those. Yeah, uh, they're three special copies. Cards. Yeah, <laughs> uh, three copies of uh, the battle droid escorts, two super battle droids, uh, two general guardians, uh, three Asajj Ventresses, three overwhelming barrages, uh, two copies of Darth Maul, uh, two copies of. 
Count Dooku and three Ruthless Raiders. And then for the sideboard here, we have two copies of Timely Intervention, two Clone Wars, two Open Fires, two uh, Hellfire Droids, and uh, two copies of the Invisible Hand to round off of the list. Yeah. And so the sideboard is just things I'm contemplating whether they go in or not. That's all that that is, just so you know. Like, it's not an actual sideboard that's tacked for anything. That's just, those are Tanner's extra cards that I felt could possibly fit into this list yeah yeah definitely uh really interesting i think the only thing i would probably consider is just maybe having a few more exploit cards in the deck um just to uh kind of force some of the the interactions in the event that your opponent um goes like very base heavy and they ignore your units um becomes a lot less um gives you a lot less agency to get your ability off more reliably um unless you have more export or exploit units that you can use to take advantage to kill your own super laser techs and so on um that might help out the deck a little bit but i don't know what exactly i would trade out and what you got so far um, for it Yeah. So kind of the idea behind it, right, is, a, is half of the cards create droids, or I, I'd say probably 30% of the cards are creating droids. So, like, yeah. that's the idea behind it is you create the droids so that you have them for exploit, so that you have it so you can run into something. Um, and then, obviously, Maul is, like, Maul is the big one. Like, Dooku, Dooku's going to be really good, I think, when he comes out. Um, and then that Ruthless Raider, like, I don't have a lot of space, so that was kind of the other um, concession is I wanted to put something bigger in space. But the idea is you're supposed to win well before you hit, like, resource eight or nine. So, But this is the one I've been playing around with. So I've been playing on the Force table with this thing, and it uh, it does pretty good into Sabine, but it's Force table, so right, we're not getting real true testing. So we'll see. Alex, thoughts, yeah. anything? Yeah, it seems fine. You know, fine. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, like, mess around with... I mean, I know you're supposed to be dropping a lot of units, right? So that's, like, for Poggle and for, like, the, uh, you know, the Vanguards, your self-destructs, all that kind of stuff. Maybe add another self-destruct so you can actually trigger, like, JJ's head, Asajj, and Dooku are the only ones with exploit. You know, not sure how the battle droid escort, how good that's going to be. So, you know, just, like, tweak a little things here and there. Nothing crazy. Do have a big weakness in space, though. But, you know, it is an aggro deck, right? It's trying to do something. Yeah. Yeah, and the space is, like I said, the space is a little bit, like, behind. I mean, I, I tried those Tri-Fighters because I'm debating. Like, I've had actually good success with those um, against some, like, mid-range heal decks. But what I've found is they, they only hit for three. So, like, yep. you can, you can, you, they don't really hit very hard um, at all. So. See, the weird thing is, like, I'm not even sure if a rolling barrage is actually, like, worth it. <laughs> it it's a very strange feeling. Yeah, and it might not be. It's just that's this is you're probably right, and it probably in the long run maybe this card isn't worth like me playing, right? But that's it's mostly because you got a bunch of droids everywhere, right? Like uh, yeah, your big units are already yeah, I mean, like, you're not going to split a turn with overwhelming and also dropping a big unit. Well, I mean, I, I do like the overwhelming barrage just to have the the board control aspect of it, right? Because you do have a couple of uh, cheap, decent uh, hitters, right? Between um, like some of your your space units, um, your uh, your super battle droids, you know, those that have four attack. Um, you can get them out there early, and then if they survive into round five, you know, you have that overwhelming barrage that you can use to help clear the board. Or later on in the game, once you have Count Duke out there or Ruthless Raider, um, I think there's there's space for that in your in your list, you know, for consideration. So I, I wouldn't eliminate it. All right. I don't know. They just, you know, if you got a bunch of weenie units, overwhelming barrage, you're going to do too much, and you're relying on sticking a you know, a couple of units that have like three health. <laughs> yeah. Or two with our, our B1 attack platform there, which yep. would be great. Overwhelming barrage, but the, I'm sure that thing will die soon. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe those come out, right? Because they're not going to be needed. And maybe something else with exploit goes in there or open fires. Open fires are always. Yeah. Force chokes. 
horse chokes are a consideration. So, like, those are always ones that, that could easily slot in there. The other list that I've been playing with is Ahsoka's Revenge. The only thing, I'll be honest, the only thing I have not tested is this new Ahsoka's lightsaber. I've not had a chance to actually test that, but I put it in there because it's her lightsaber, so it feels like it needs to be in there because it's a one-cost lightsaber, for Christ's sake. Um, yeah. So, Alex, you want to go over, you want to read this list? Sure. This is your Ahsoka deck. You got Triple Soldier of the 501st. Triple... 332nd stalwart i'm sure that's how you do that uh triple ahsoka's padawan lightsaber very interesting to see if there's another ahsoka lightsaber it's not the padawan one uh triple a wing triple republic tactical officer that's not an officer double anakin's interceptor uh you got oh god everything's getting all messy here uh double Clone Heavy Trooper, Double Phase 1 Trooper, Double Private Manufacturer, Triple Red 3, Triple uh, Admiral Ularin here, Triple 501st Liberator, Double General's Blade, uh, Double Batch Brothers, Triple uh, Bold Resistance, the one where they all share the same traits, so you get the plus twos. Uh, you got Double Shock T, Double Heavy... Uh, double drop in, that's which we'll get to later. <laughs> uh, triple Anakin, double Rax, and double tranquility. In the side, looks like you're considering Echo here. Um, another a Coruscant guard, the Clone Wars, uh, Mace Windu's lightsaber, interestingly enough. Uh, triple open fire, and then a couple of uh, Republic commandos. Yeah, and the sideboard for that, the lightsaber is I don't, I just don't think you need. <laughs> I don't think you need like more than five or six lightsabers, right? Like I, just, I should also mention that you do have the droid manufacturing base. So when Ahsoka deploys, she gets that instant coordinate. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty great. That I, I was very down on that until we started playing around with it. And I was a little bit more surprised. So the idea here too is right. Like if you don't just dis- deploy Ahsoka, she just doesn't deploy. But typically, when her five resource turn happens, you should at least have one, maybe two other units on the board, um, unless you're placing it against like some super hard control type thing. Um, and if they're doing that, they're not going to your base. When Ahsoka comes out and that was those battle droids come off, she, her coordinate is instantaneous. You could play drop in as well if you want the extra things. Or you can use, you know, like a shock T or you can use any of these other like smaller type things, or you could just save your resources and drop that general's blade. Again, I haven't tested Ahsoka's Padawan lightsaber yet, so I don't know how that works. I'm assuming it's okay. It's a one cost lightsaber. Um, But that general's lightsaber is just so good because like you can play something bigger like a shock T um, if you want, and then when you flip her the next turn, you can drop the general's lightsaber on her, you get your battle droids, and then you can actually, you can go through killing things and doing whatever you want to do, and then you get to, you know, because it's on her, you get to pay something else in your hand that's cheaper. So then you can turn around, you've got two resources plus, so you, so you got another four resources, right, to, to play something, um, which has actually been really good. And I didn't that Padme card. I was kind of a little down on because it was three resources. But those battle droids drop, or you have if you play drop in when you have her. So now you have battle droids and her and those clone troopers. Like it's it's actually like they're some of the stuff is just good for that next turn after the Ahsoka drop or change or or whatever deployment. Sorry. Um, I don't know. So this is this is another this is more aggro than even the other one before. I think this one actually like fits into a, an actual more aggro state, except for those um, those power manufacturing cards, which I do wonder if those could probably just come out in this type of a deck, but they, they're, like, they're just so nice to be able to draw two. To, it's so nice to be able to draw two cards for two resources. It's just, oh my gosh. <clears throat> like, it's saved me. <laughs> like, so much. Especially against like a pillage deck. Oh my god. Like I played against uh Ray Tarkin's Hound and they pillaged me and I had that card left over, but they didn't kill any of my units on the ground, right? So like all I had to do was just play that card and I got my two cards back. They weren't the same ones, but nice. you know, yeah. I got more cards back. 
Yeah, for me, the only thing I would consider is just adding in Wrecker, mainly because he's just all-purpose good. Um, but beyond that, this is a really solid list. I think I... You get Clone like Trooper Center, you do. Yeah. With Wrecker. You do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so... Yep. Wrecker fits into this list, too. I just... And Wrecker probably is better than that space. The, again, this this deck has a space problem right now, currently. So this yeah. one really has a space problem. Um, but that's fine. I think you can fix some of that. The red threes, like this is similar-ish. Like I went through green Sabine type stuff and like was looking at what the synergies and how the synergies and trying to create, I'm trying to, hopefully we won't have to see millions of Sabines. Like this could be something like this could be an option. So any other thoughts or we can move on? I just, like I said, I just thought it was fun. I wanted to build some decks and I've been building, I've, I've been building other decks just because I'm, waiting for the new set to drop and i'm excited for <laughs> i'm excited for clone stuff this is probably yeah, just so you all know this will be the most excited i'll probably get about this game is this set so just <laughs> as an fyi yeah same here i think i think there's going to be a lot of great uh like card combinations that we've yet to see um but man um uh, I I would absolutely love to see like updated pop decks with some of these cards and man like it, it's going to be a fun time for sure. Awesome. Well, let's move on. Let's hit up our chaos of war and go through our uh, PQ tournament analysis for this week. All right, welcome to our Chaos of War. This is PQ Week 2 analysis. So if you are watching this any other week but this week, this is for the second Planetary Qualifier Week in 2024 in October. And I thought I should just point this out because I don't know how often people are going to go ever go back and watch these late after the PQs, but this is important information for now. So we're, we're going to start. The first thing we're going to start is I participating in a, a PQ this weekend. I ended up coming in 11th. Um, I guess somehow I'm now 12th, but I was 11th at the end of the day um, before when they went to top cut. I actually was in the last round. I lost my last game to uh, Loopy from Late Night Gaming. Um, and it was a really good match. And I think, I don't know, at first he was very chatty. And by the end, we got to the end. Like we basically almost went to time. Um, and he was playing Green Sabine. And by the end, he was like, oh, OK, holy crap. He's like, yeah, OK. So he had like I had to get serious and make sure that, you know, I could try to win this. So um, but we played I played um, we played seven rounds and then they went to the top cut. And if I had beaten Loopy, I would have been in the top cut. I would have been up being either like I would have been in between four and six is where I would have landed. So um, I played green Kira. So there you go. I did not play red pelp. That was the decision. Um, I think it was a very good decision, personally. I know Alex would disagree with me, but <laughs> I mean it worked um, out for you. I did not want to play Red Pelt with the Sabine all day. I I like it's I just didn't want to play. I I just it's just too it's so it became it would become so frustrating. Um, and I ended up having to play two Sabines on the on top tables. So, um, so we'll give a short analysis of the run. And then we're not going to actually go through my list. I don't think like, I don't know if it matters or not. Like personally, I'll show you my list and stuff like that. Um, but essentially the top, this, this PQ had um, one Han green, which is really cool to see getting in the top eight, a Boba red um, got in the top eight. And then everything else was Sabines and Bobas. Like, so like basically the Han was like the outlier um, on the top tables between like so my last round my round seven was against loopy and then um ryan turfshire was running sabine green and he's one of my locals his last round was against akira green as well and if either one of us had won we would have been and there would have been akira green in the top um the top table so this was my list um when my son sees it he's going to shoot me because we originally took dr um pershing out and I had another Snoke in there, and that was the flip flop. That was the Tanner's flip flop. Was that two cards in, in there? And I ended up pulling, I ended up pulling one High Bond Enforcer and one Snoke, and putting the two Pershings in. 
And I will say Pershings against like Sabines were worthless. I never ran into a Boba, so I I guess I never got to find that out. But against like Boss and stuff like that, oh my gosh, like holy crap. Like I couldn't believe how great that was against Boss because like they don't want me to be able to go to base, so they have to try to kill my other unit. And so I had the initiative a lot of the time so I could swing in with my unit if I had one on the board and then I could just Pershing. So like they could kill Pershing with their power of the dark side, but then, you know, what are they going to do? Um, so essentially my round one was a Sabine yellow. My round two was a CAD, um, a CAD red. And my round three was a Bosque blue. Round four was um, w- against my son. <laughs> who was running Han Han blue. So that was a, I, that was very unfortunate that I'd run into him. My fifth round was against another Bosque blue for Christ's sake. So like, I don't know how I got paired into boss yeah. blue for the day, but that was not, that was definitely not the day Tanner wanted to see the, the list I wanted to see on the table. Um, and then after that, I played two Sabines. So then I had to play the, my round six was against Gabe, the guy that actually came with me. So I played two people that rode with me <laughs> and then, uh, my seventh round was against Loopy, so um, it was not. Pershing was amazing in the control matchups, just as an FYI. So Pershing nice. was awful against Sabine; like it was not even worth dropping against Sabine. It just—I actually cited Pershing out to to put in a uh, to put in all the top targets and stuff like that. Yeah, so, so yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I ended up five and two on the day. I came in eleventh. Um, I got three hyperspace foil uh, aggression cards. So I guess if somebody wants to buy those, like, I don't know if I need three of these things, but I have them now. Um, Now I actually, I started building a mall red deck, by the way, just so I could run my three aggression. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what to do with them. (laughs) I don't know what else to do with them. I don't run, uh, I don't run double red very often. So, Um, so somebody has like a cheap showcase that would like to trade for me. I would happily trade that. Like maybe a Hondo showcase or I don't know. Hunter showcase. Mm-hmm. I would probably trade those for a showcase if somebody had a cheap showcase. But anyway, so that was kind of my run. Um, I I did not. There's only only two games, three games. Throw three out of the seven games. I won two zero. So um, I won two one against the Sabine Yellow. I lost in a one two against the Cad Red. Um. And that that one was I don't know that was it was fine, except for the problem became is that the first game I swept handily. The second game they sneak attacked two ruthless raiders basically in a row, like each turn in a row. I could I could not heal fast enough to like those things just like wrecked my base. Like holy crap, like nobody's business. But I will tell you, anybody that runs sneak attack, if you run top target, you just throw it on on there and you immediately get it. So, um. So the first time, the the first time after I figured that out, I was like, oh, that's really good. Like, it's better if it's against, like, if they sneak attack in something that's unique because then you get to heal six. But, you know, um, and then I play after that, I played the boss blues and the first match was a two one. I won with like, I don't know, 30 seconds left in the round, basically, which was just horrible because like the first game, like. He he mill basically the first game he didn't mill win me but I ended up conceding towards the end because it just wasn't worth my time because he just kept he had like a restock and so he was restocking that and vigilance and yep. um and he so like I just said screw this like let's just go to the next game we've already wasted twenty five minutes I don't think I can win this um and then um the other the next run I ended up winning. Um, a little bit more handily because I I basically just took my whole side deck and dumped it in my deck. <laughs> so like, I was just like, nice. screw it, I'm just gonna run sixty cards. You want to mill me? And then <laughs> I don't know if he saw that I did that or what he did, but then he he ended up not milling me that game. And then it was a war of attrition. And then like oh, I won with the, the relentless. By the way, is just the, like hands down the best card against those type of decks. And like I I I did run the two relentless main deck. Uh, my son told me that that was probably smarter than the devastators. If you're going to see control, if you're not going to see control, Devastators hands down are a million times a better card. But this was to tech against the control. So in case I ran into control, all I had, I, I didn't have to like side them and they were there. And against Boss Blue, like they came in the, the second Boss Blue I played, they just came in like hands down was like the best card of the game. Um, 
so yeah so that was kind of that was kind of what it was a second the third game like i said almost went to time and i ended up winning um based on having an avenger uh and then i was able to smuggle out all of my lawn pikes i i resourced all of them and was able to smuggle every one of them out and then like they just couldn't kill me through attrition fast enough and then after that it was a hot was my son against han blue uh han two blue um and that was a little unfortunate because i know knew his deck and i knew how he played it and i lost to him earlier in the week so i knew some of the the plays against it uh so that wasn't very fair to him um his second game he did get a redemption off um which saved him until i was just again able to drop snoke just wrecks things in that deck and he he couldn't draw his great dragons fast enough to like to save himself so then i play then after that i played another boss blue and both though i won both those games um that guy did not try to mill me or pillage me really at all and the first game, he didn't see any of his crate dragons at all. Um, and then he didn't see, he saw two Avengers, um, but he didn't see a lot of other stuff. And so, like, my Relentless, just again, like saving grace of the freaking game, like that was easy. That one I got first light out. So I pulled first light out and then dumped the damage onto Relentless and then was able to swing in for 12 and like, like that like then that put him down to like he literally <laughs> he was down to like three health on his base and there's he couldn't take care of both of them and i don't know what he cited in but i ended up citing and not as all the cards from it i i threw in my pelts returns is what i did i threw in uh the evidence of the crime which was my tech card uh for it was for it was for boba's armor by the way but you know what it works <laughs> out really well against bosk so i realized that like halfway through playing bosk is like you can use that evidence of the crime and i moved and entrenched I moved an entrenched <laughs> off of my relentless onto some like small unit and, and, and then, then relentless just swung in after. And I waited, I literally held that card and waited to use that until after he had claimed and then I did it. And then I was like, Oh, here, I'm going to do this and just move it back over. And I almost wish I'd ran two. I was going to put two in the sideboard for tech. And then I decided not to, um, that's nasty, man. That's great. <laughs> like that card, do it. Like again, I li- it was literally tech for Boba's armor. That's literally why I put that card in there was in case I face a bunch of Bobas. That was just an easy side in. Hold the card. Boba gets armor. You just move it, move it around. It was even ri- it's even risky, right? Because Boba can control your board. But against Bosk, it was it was hilarious. That guy goes, "Oh, okay." I was like, "Sorry." Like, but that's that actually that card won me that second boss game. Like pretty handily there was not much they could do um after that and then i played gabe who ran sabine green again but it's another local that i play against all the time so um i lost the second game after he sighted in and i couldn't draw power of the dark side the second time and then the third game i found them again and i ended up with a snoke and two overwhelming barrages and so i played a snoke killed his units he couldn't kill snoke played an overwhelming barrage wiped the board played a second overwhelming barrage and wiped the board the next turn. And then it, that like, it was just at that point, it was just over. There was nothing like to do. And then I played loopy for my final game. I won the first game because of vigilance. I was able to heal. The second game was really tight and close and he was able to get a win on the second game. And then our third game almost went to time and he ended up winning that game a little bit more handily, but I ended up healing. I ran through three vigilances and a top target. And top target on K2SO is great because they want to, K2SO to kill him. So, like, it just eats three of that damage. So, top target, by the way, is like, uh, I, that card is so much better than I gave it credit for. Holy crap. Yeah, it's an incredible card. Like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, that was my run. That was the PQ. I don't know. It was fun. Awesome, man. It was a very taxing day. I'll tell you that. Well, good run. For sure. Like, you know, it's a lot of, how many people were there? 106 there was 128 signed up and there's 106 that played there you go so that awesome. ain't bad yeah so yeah so that was it was fun it was fun fun day um nothing there again there's nothing really special about my list it's just it's just a kira green list with ecl so um if you want to play something that's not sabine there you go all right Let's move on, and we don't have to spend all night talking about these because I do want to get to spoilers tonight because the spoilers are more important than anything else. But um, 
So we had, I think there was nine PQs this weekend, nine between nine and that 12 PQs somewhere around there that are happening. There is still one that hasn't finished yet and we don't have the results for. And if they've posted them, I don't care. I'm not, uh, I'll, I'm not going to worry about that tonight. Um, but as you can see here again, um, they did have a Tarkin yellow that made it to the top eight, which is pretty cool to see. Um, but in the end, it was just Boba again. Like I, this time it was a Boba blue that won, but it was just Boba again that went. Uh, the that was a Spain PQ, a France PQ. Um, essentially, they did have two rays and like no Sabines and then Boss Blues. So like, I don't know where the Sabines were. <laughs> like, because I think Sabine like is favored into into Ray. I mean, maybe not, but I think Sabine Ooh, is. No, no, like no. What, what color? Right? No, Ray has too much restore for Sabine generally. Okay, and maybe that's maybe the Ray is the answer. But like, this is th that's great to see that right. Like. Like I, I'm not happy to see two boss blues up there, but um, it is it is fun to see that. Um, and then you know obviously it was taken down with Ray Tarkintel, right? So Ray Red won that one. That's pretty cool to see. Um, the next one is I think that's I think that's Poland, right? Is it Poland or Sweden? I don't know which. Ah, uh, jeez, I don't know. Wherever Copenhagen is, there you go. Norway, maybe. I don't know. It's somewhere in the Netherlands area. I, I uh, assume it's um, not Norway. I don't know. But that one again was filled with mostly Boba and Sabine. One Denmark. Kira. Denmark. Denmark. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. One Kira, one Kylo, and one Cad Blue, which is kind of cool to see a Cad Blue in there. Um, but other than that, Boba took that one down. Um, that was a smaller event. It looks like 53 pillars, so about half the size. Um, one of my locals does a um, a CAD, a blue CAD, and it's a it's a pretty cool deck. I like it. Yeah, it's it can be nasty with those pings. Um, there's lots of of underworld cards that that ping, and then just being able to control and ping and ping and ping. It's crazy. Uh, moving on to the next one. I don't know where this one was either. So Austria. There you go. All right. Thank you. Uh, that one again is basically Boba, a Han Green, and um, one Kira. Boba wins that. The next one is in Sheffield. So this one's like UK, right? And yeah. this one, same, roughly same size as the one I we we went to. This one had a a lot more variety in the top. It wasn't all Bobas, but there was no Sabines either. So there's a Kira. Han Blue, Boba, Bosk, Han One Yellow, which is crazy. Um, and Boss Blue ended up taking that one down. Right. So Boss Boss taking something down. Um, so that's like the second thing that Bosk has taken down. Um and he got Spain like a week ago, right? Like it's yep. he's he's showing up and then in Europe. Yeah. Um, and I think like that's the conversation is if if it can play into both Boba and into Sabine. Like that might be the deck that is just some of the counter to to what the meta actually is. Um, the next one is Rochester. Um, this one, I think the the guy that took it down, the Boba Green that took it down, is the guy that took down the Red Seal Gaming one last week. Just as an FYI, I think it's the exact same guy. Hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but there was chatter about that. But again, the same thing. All you're seeing is Bobas and Sabines, and then one Han. Oh, oh two Hans. I apologize, two Hans. Now we go to Las Vegas. Las Vegas, uh, again, very Sabine um, heavy. Less Boba, it seems. Uh, they had a boss ECL make it to the top eight. That's pretty cool to see. Um, I that, that surprises me making it up that far. Um, and then they, so then they had the Hans. They had a Sabine. So this, that one actually had like really good variety. Sabine did take it down, and it was a Sabine Sabine final. So, like, riveting. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that was a quick final. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, so it, like I said, it is it is what it is. But that's that's where that is. And then the next one is uh, Italy, right? Um, yeah. That one we don't know everything, but that was taken down by a Bulba Green again. France is the next one. France was a little bit more diverse. France feels like everybody likes blue over there, <laughs> like Han One Blue. And we're gonna look at the Han One Blue list just because it's I don't know, like. I got to ask Alex some questions. That one had a pelp blue show up too. 
And so like this, this one either had no Sabines running at all, or they just were not very good Sabine players because that is a lot of blue to show up in the or top. They have cut. a ton of ton of bobas, right? To kind of suppress the Sabine. suppress the Sabines, but then like the blue yeah. control kind of does really well against most of the bobas. So all over the place. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that one that one was a Han one yellow versus a boba yellow. Um, had one yellow one. Um, so that's kind of cool to see for it. Um, we'll come back to the list in just a second, actually. Um, so this is kind of the breakdown. Somebody did a breakdown for top eights. Uh, there's roughly like 120 players based on how many we've had. And this kind of breaks down and shows you the meta of what's making top eight the most, excuse me, the most. Uh, so there's your Boba green up the top, then Boba yellow and then Boba red. A um, couple more, more boba red, and then a boba blue, um, and then after that you have your Sabines. Obviously, ECL is this top dog there. Um, it's surprising, uh, ECL isn't a little bit higher um, than eighteen wins or eighteen yeah. people winning it. Um, but other than that, everything is pretty low on the scale. Like the next biggest thing that is like Han Blue is showing up, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That's kind of your meta breakdown. Um, I don't know how much there is to talk about it, guys. I, I, I don't know. Like, I think if you're going to a PQ, so if Alex would tell you Tanner don't run meta um, and he would run, he would run something <laughs> off meta just because he wants to. And but if you're going to take down a PQ, like I will tell you, even with all of the Boba being played, Sabine is still pretty prevalent. I mean, we in our PQ we had quite a few Sabines and they were at the top tables too. Um, and I know some of that's your matchup dependent, right? You know, like I got stuck playing against Boss Reds or Boss Blue, sorry, and they probably would rather play a Sabine than play a Kira. Like they probably would rather play Sabines because they have play into Sabines. Um, but this, I don't know if you're going to a PQ in the next two weeks, this is what you're going to be looking at. And I don't think there's going to be, I don't know, Alex, what do you think? Do you think there's going to be anything other meta shaking? Like, is there anything we can do to knock some of this Sabine? Like, is there a list that goes into Sabine and Boba that does decent enough that we can just feel comfortable with? Green Boba <laughs> goes into itself pretty well. I don't know. I like green Boba. It, it... I mean, the what, like the blue boss has been kind of, you know, it's doing well over here in uh, Europe, right? And like that has enough control to slow down Sabine with the healing, the top targets, all that kind of stuff. And like it does decently well against Bulbas. So that might be on the rise. Um, honestly, you know, there's still items floating out, floating around there. Like Iden's still not a bad matchup into. Uh, some things like that, like especially with just the healing you get from Iden. So maybe, maybe I mean, as as metas go by, right? You usually start aggro and then trend to control as everything settles out. So I'm assuming there's probably going to be a little bit more control, especially if like the number of bulbas continue to rise. But also, if the number of bulbas like starts going down because there's more control, then Sabine's back. It's all cyclical. It's cool. Yeah, I kind agree. of, kind of. <laughs> I I would I would prefer a big a little bit more diverse meta than like two or three decks. <laughs> I mean, it's it's still yeah. really diverse compared to a lot of other card games. So, yeah, I agree. I, I in going along the same route, like I think Boss right now has been seeing a lot more play because Boss does have a lot of options to really take advantage of killing the weaker uh, aggro units um and sh like I i've seen that more in my locals you know a lot more um boss play just to help counter sabine doesn't do as well against boba um but it can absolutely shut down a, a sabine list pretty well um you know 
it's just this got to worry about other counters you know some other types of lists that can really like shut down boss but if you're in a meta where you're playing against like a lot of sabines and a lot of bobas and stuff boss is definitely a a pretty decent option for you um but again it just requires you to just have a lot of practice and a lot of patience because sometimes you know the draws don't come up exactly how you need them and that's that's where you run into trouble with sabine you need to have the right cards at the right time to really you know slow down their pace and if you're not able to pull that off, it, it becomes um, it can snowball on you really fast. So, yeah. So those are that's kind of where the meta is sitting. Um, I I don't know. Like I think there's people saying Boba is just too good or Sabine is just too good, and I I, I always want to shy away from some of that. I think there might be a few cards like. For example, Boba's armor is allowed for Boba to have a little bit more prevalence against Sabine. Um, but you could tech against it, right? Like you, you can run compensates. That's what like Ryan or other locals runs three compensates in his sideboard. Loopy ran three compensates in the sideboard specifically for the Boba matchups. Um, so I, I don't know. Um I hesitate to say there's a problem. I think the difference is is like when you go to these larger tournaments. You're going to take a risk if you don't want to run one of the top three, you know, decks. I took a risk. I ran Kira. Kira does decent into Sabine uh, and it does okay into Boba. Um, you know, I was more worried about Sabine matchups personally, and maybe that's my bias from West Side of Michigan. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, there's all those different things. Um, so this is the Boba Green and, uh, list, and we're not going to really go through. Uh, the cards because we've seen this before the enticing rewards was new um, and he used that guy used it in his list very prominently so this was the one from pastimes that won the whole event um, he also had like Sal he also he loved the salacious crumbs like nobody's business too like he loved those things um, so much and this this deck like running the three bulbas armor, basically saying, I don't care about your compensates is what he's doing. Um, and that like yeah. the, between commission and those enticing rewards, those let him draw the cards he needs. Um, and I guess like when we told you, when I told you before, it's a beat or Bazine's good and you don't kill Bazine, you should kill Bazine against a McClunky deck because the minute they drop Bazine, they just could pick the stupid thing back up, kill one of your units and then drop it again. So, um, and McClunky for one is like just devastating. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, uh, your second, you could drop a Bazine turn one and turn two, you can McClunky it, kill their unit and pick it back up. And that's why they work very well against like control decks or against Sabine decks, because you could strip out the card that they're going to play next turn that you know that they're planning for. Um, you, you can start stripping out the pose and the records or the dark sabers. Um, all sorts of different fun little things. So there's nothing super special in my opinion. I don't know. Do you, does either of you see anything super special about this deck different other than the enticing reward is a, is a newer addition. I mean, the commission is also a little bit um, different. I mean, it works because, you know, you have bounty hunters and, uh, you know, I believe Boba Fett's armor is also an item, right? So like you can mm -hmm. commission that. So that that's cool. It, it relies a lot more on events than you would typically see in a green boba, and also it doesn't have reinforcement walkers like at all, including the sideboard. So that's a little bit atypical. But also you're throwing down three mall three Vader, right? So yeah, um, it's still good. I mean, I I've been championing that I like green boba more than yellow boba since the yellow boba started winning stuff. And now it's kind of switching into there because now it has an actual end game, and that's really important in Boba. Yeah, um, yeah. And his the 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 thing about the the way he played this deck was just different than uh, some of the other green Boba players played it too. Um, so just the, the using those commissions and and the enticing rewards just lets you pull things that you just would be like, why would I ever need that? But Sometimes you need certain things at certain times, and the, yeah. the the cards that are digging. It's just again, it's something like you would think a bounty is very slow, um, but it is not. 
And thank God Boba's armor doesn't have smuggle on it. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, for real. Um, yeah, getting like that Boba turn where you're just like, cool, I'm going to like commission for Boba's armor, you know, kill something, get that resource back, flip Boba, put Boba's armor on there, and then kill something with Boba or like finish your attack with Boba. You should probably live at that point. Uh, and then you get back two resources and then you're still at five. <laughs> And then you could continue with the rest of your turn that you're doing. So yeah. it's kind of silly. Yep. Um, I am a little surprised with the real one recruit in there when I would actually run two Pelps returns personally, um, just for the pure fact of being able to get back that fire spray. Um, like five fire sprays is pretty good. Like if you haven't won the game with five fire sprays <laughs> at some point, I don't know what to tell you. So, um, uh, that's the only real big surprising thing is that so um the other one there the, the, i have two more lists like so this one was a boba red um and this one's not a tarkin town i don't know if it matters but this is basically like a, the all space deck that we kind of saw come out that's now making a bigger splash um so it's a boba space deck um, I don't agree with the two pillages in the sideboard just personally but that's just me i don't i think pillages I don't think pillage is as good a card as people think it is. Um. Uh, I mean, I the the reason I could see it being useful is that you know it kind of acts like a Bazine, you know, um, in a way uh, where you're facing off against Sabine, you just eliminate potential cards that can come out from your opponent's hand. But you know, you, you're not choosing it yourself; your opponent has to do it. There's some utility in it, but yeah, it's it's just good as a sideboard piece, honestly. It actually also is pretty good against other um, go wide decks because you can pillage out two cards and if they're going really, really wide, they wanted to play those units. So it's actually a little bit more utility than you'd expect, but it's... <sighs> yeah, it feels like a sideboard card to me, though. Uh, maybe that's just because of the decks that I play where I'm just like, okay, well, you pillage me, that's fine. Like I have, I did see it come in handy against you know, like against Sabines, right? Like I did see, I have seen that happen where you just pillage a Sabine and basically you just you're just neutering Sabine's churn. The problem I have is it's a, if you don't have units on board, it's a four, it's a four, it's a four cost card. I don't know. It's a four, it works really well with force throw. How about that? I like pillage when you can run force throw and all these other things if you just want to keep stripping their hand, but. On that four resource churn, it's just, I don't know. It just feels so bad. I don't know. But anyway, this is a um, a space deck. So this is one we, I mean, we've kind of seen some of this before. We saw a little bit. I wanted to bring it to people's attention because this actually it showed up a little bit more in our, in our PQ too. Um, and I think that this is something you should be on the lookout for because this is kind of like what I would call the first iteration of you know, somebody that wants to say, I want to run space only. I mean, we we tested some of this stuff a little bit at the beginning of the set, and I don't know why we abandoned it other than, I don't know, I, it's Boba, so I'm, I'm just not super into running Boba, personally. Um, though this deck actually seems kind of fun to run just because of space units, and I like, you know, it's like that, it's like that Tarkin, you know, yellow deck. It's That's that's really fun to run a bunch of space units, you know? Um, it is fun to run space units. <laughs> I believe um, the undefeated in Swiss at the uh, Warren store showdown last week. Uh, the only undefeated was a red Boba deck that was incredibly similar, if not the exact same one. I don't know uh, exactly what he ran, but it gets pretty nasty. Yeah. And it can push through a lot of damage. And, you know, with those tie, those lurking tie phantoms, I mean, Hard to interact just, with them. Yeah, they're just so <laughs> good. So, and if you have everything else in space, you could just kill whatever they put into space. <laughs> you know, so yeah. oh, I'm just gonna kill that first, so you can't kill my lurking tie. Um, I now kind of wonder if like an all space Kylo deck would be a viable deck too, or not. There's people who ran like a triple dark raid Kylo deck. I just wonder if that's like a viable. Like, I understand why everybody wants to run Boba, but like Kylo's more fun to run. So <laughs> Kylo's a lot more fun to run. Boba's boring. Um, I, I 
I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll build. Maybe I'll take my nephew's Kylo deck and tear it apart and build a space only Kylo deck. See how it goes. And then the one I wanted to cover for sure was a Han blue because this is Han one blue. This is not Han two blue. This is Han one blue. Alex, like, have you? Is this? Like, I think you were testing Han blue. Were you not? Oh, a long time ago. And, and uh, I believe Paul Heaver also ran this in set one, right? So, yeah, I have no idea. What I do know, what I do know is he has don't get cocky in there. And I've never, ever in my life seen anybody play don't get cocky. I enjoy that card for the pure fact of like what it is. But like this guy went top eight with a we two don't get cocky. Coming, right? it's, it's a force based Han deck. I, I can go through it. Um, yeah. yeah, let's I'll, go through it. This is great. Yeah. This is a great deck. So it's got double Mystic Reflection, which I think will be a lot better next set. Uh, double Mystic Reflection, double Spark Rebellion, uh, triple Quill, triple Yoda, triple Jedi Lightsaber, triple Ezra, triple uh, three cost Millennium Falcon, triple uh, Concord Dawn Interceptors, triple DJ, triple Tech, triple Kanan, triple The Forces With Me, double Don't Get Cocky, double Fell the Dragon, Triple Obi, double Rivals Fall, triple Luke, double Han, double Redemption. In the side, you've got double Top Target, triple Confiscate, triple Village Protectors, a third copy of Fell the Dragon, and one Change of Heart. And this is just play a bunch of Jedi. <laughs> I hit really hard. Still got the tech DJ combo in there. You got Force it with me. It's just like valuing. Just like ramping, uh, like pseudo ramping with Han, and then just trying to drop value units. And also, so, you kind of get a little bit of um, a synergy right there with Ezra. And uh, don't get cocky, right? Because Ezra, you could look at the top card and either dump it, play it, or leave it there. So if you know what's going, I guess you kind of have don't get cocky. But also, like, you know, you got a fair amount of high guard. Like, you got five cards that cost seven, which maxes out don't get cocky. And five cards that cost six and that's probably good enough at that point <laughs> yeah i i am not in agreement with his rivals fall choices personally but maybe it doesn't matter um i've actually disliked that card the longer i've played it as an overall card like i don't think it's a bad like we need this in the game but i just am not i found i don't use it in the a lot of the, like in a lot of the decks even like even in a pelt deck i just i'm not like i play pelt blue and i just don't use that card like it is the oh my god! I let this game come to this thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, like oh no, this is this is bailing me out card. Yeah, I don't know. I like I know he can't play super laser blast right because obviously that's villain. But I don't know. And maybe that's an issue. Maybe that's why he has that in there. Um, and I'm very surprised there's no making openings in here. <laughs> like like making opening is like an easy card that you would want to tech in, especially because people run. Those stupid and tie lurking phantoms. I mean, I guess you got Sentinel in space, but I don't know. I mean, you should have a Falcon out there, right? That should be able to take it out because you you are most likely also dropping that uh, Falcon turn one. Because there's not a lot of two drops, right? So get a Falcon. I'm also very weird. There's no vigilance in this deck. I feel vigilance would fit in. Uh, There you go. My big switch would be dump Rivals Fall and go to Vigilance. <laughs> like I would just dump Rivals Fall just all together and go to Vigilance. If I'm going to pay I six agree. for something, I would I would pay six for that. Yeah. Again, like he doesn't have any really other control, right? I mean, the double foul, the dragon's only gonna, you know, it doesn't hit leaders, doesn't do doesn't do as much. Uh, the forces with me is great, but. Like, you know, it requires a board if, like, uh, again, like, if you drop a Devastator on me, I get to Rival's Fall. That's true. You can also fell the Dragon, though. True. I mean, there's and multiple that's outs. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a, this is a cool deck, though, right? Like, this is kind of cool to yeah. see something like this make top eight. Like, I wanted to point it out specifically to say, hey, I don't think I could run this. I don't think this is my play style. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is, because I like blue control maybe this is alex maybe you should tailor this list to tanner's play style i have the showcase for this stupid deck and i could play a showcase in a tournament maybe i'll go to the pq down in indiana in in two weeks and take this with no practice or just like two weeks of practice 
I don't know. There you go, Alex. What do you think? What do you think? You could, do you think you could tailor it to me? Uh, tailor it? I don't know, man. You want to add vigilance, and that's kind of weird in this deck. I would I think. I like vigilance. Just, yeah, I mean, you got top target in the side. Like, what do you? You're really depending on the healing. You're not trying to do that with this deck. It's it just hits hard. You got you got restore off of Quill and Yoda and Kanan. Yeah, I suppose that's true. And Luke. And redemption. Like, do you really need the, the healing from the vigilance? You don't nah. seem to need the alt win con of just milling them. So, huh. mm -hmm. well, I would hope you went with this deck, but I don't know. I like this. I, I really like this, actually. Like, I am tempted. To, I saw this today and I was, I'm actually very tempted to put this together and just play it because it looks like fun. And I have a shot on showcase. So, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> All right. uh, do you have anything else you guys want to talk about about PQs uh, for the week? No, but uh, just um, just glad that uh, we got a lot of uh, PQs over this weekend. It feels like it was a really, really big weekend for the game. And honestly, like it's awesome to see uh, the game really flourish this fast this early. And um, I'm just excited to see more events come out in the future. Yeah. And I will give a shout out to Pastime Games. I mean, they had decent price support for us i mean those what i got was worth well more than what i paid for the event um i guess it, it equals like what it, we paid for all of my kids to go so here you go i got my money back <laughs> but um you know like i think some of these stores stepping up and i think you know again we didn't talk about ffg doing this um i'm working on talking to ffg to see if there's a way i can get an interview um for op stuff um, because I want to talk to them about community building with it because these PQs are not always community friendly. Um, though I will say, I mean, my nephew had fun. He didn't meet his goal, um, but he had a pretty lofty goal of being top 64. Um, and he's never played in a big tournament ever in his life. So um, he plays hockey, though, but he's never played in a big tournament. Um, he got two wins, though. I mean, I thought that was pretty good for a 13 year old, you know? Yeah. Especially one that doesn't um have the attention span to practice like i do so <laughs> um he commits about a tenth of the time to the game that i commit and he got two wins out of it so um so and loopy was super nice that was kind of nice because he when we were playing i had to shoo him away because he kept like hovering over my shoulder while me and loopy are playing <laughs> i don't know this is to go to the top tables leave me alone please and then afterwards like loopy spent like a whole like five six minutes talking to my nephew about what he liked about the game and why he liked the game and um and stuff like that so Super fun. Um, anyway, that was kind of our planetary qualifier discussion. Um, I know Alex is chomping at the bit to get to the spoilers. We have some amazing spoilers. I won't lie and say that actually I felt this was a very good week for spoilers. Um, there was a lot of stuff that I was pretty excited about. Um, very surprised and not surprised at the same time. And I'm hoping I get a Yoda build deck. So we're going to talk about the spoilers for our Galactic Gazette segment. All right. Welcome to our Galactic Gazette segment tonight. We have all sorts of spoilers. We are still getting spoilers. It feels, it feels like we're going to have spoilers for at least another two weeks. I'm very excited about it. Once we get through most of the cards, I'm, we're not going to do a spoiler section. We'll turn it into what is Alex's weird, crazy deck that he built. So Alex is committing. <clears throat> Alex is committing to helping us build some crazy effing decks. Oh, am I now? Yes. Yep. We're gonna. I want. I want to be the premier. Who built that stupid deck? There we go. That that'll be a new segment. Who built that stupid deck? That's just for a cause. I believe it. <laughs> That's the whole point. That's why we named it like that. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So. Yeah. So we have two uh new leaders that we're going to talk about tonight. Um. And I'm very like I said. I'm very excited about this this Yoda one. I I, I know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you guys are all excited about it. I'm just very excited about Yoda. Um, and I want to say that part of the reason I'm excited about Yoda is because in Destiny, we had Yoda Leia Mel. Um, and that was a thing. And that was super fun. And Yoda was just like one of the best characters to play. And my Yoda dice were always hot. So that's why I probably like playing him. But Yoda had no blanks on his you know, on his dice. So like it was just like he was like the best guy to run. <laughs> it, was so, it was so fun. And he's just like, oh, I'm going to mill you. Oh, I'm gonna mill you now. 
Um, people hated it. Oh man, people hated that. But anyway, JJ, take us off with the first one. Tell us about Previsla. What's going on with that? All right, awesome. So I feel this is probably maybe a stronger version of Previsla that we got here. So uh, he is a uh, red aspect villainy leader with the Mandalorian and Trooper uh, keyword on there. Uh, his uh, ability reads action, spend one resource, and to use this, deal damage to a unit equal to the number of cards you draw in this phase. This does not include cards drawn in the regroup phase. That's a very key uh, uh, part there of his uh, ability. Uh, and then he deploys on five cards, and his ability reads, uh, he's a five cost with four attack, six health with Mandalorian Trooper. And while you have three or more cards in your hand, this unit gains Saboteur. And while you have six or more cards in your hand, this unit gets plus two attack uh, for uh, his ability here. So really good. Um, the reason why I like this card a lot is, number one, he's still going to benefit a lot from having all the Mandalorian upgrades on there um he will absolutely benefit from having cards like i am your father from set one um because you're either your opponent is either going to allow you to use that card to deal a ton of damage to a unit and potentially kill it or you're going to draw cards and then he can use his ability later on to then just deal damage from the amount of cards he just drew from um from i am your father um, so it's uh, it can absolutely be really good. Um, he when you start factoring in some of the uh, Mandalorian armors that start to help negating uh, damage or increasing attack and stuff, uh, you're you're going to have a really strong pre Vizsla uh, play that can that can do really well, and you can passively take out units um, pretty reliably uh, with uh, with the pre Vizsla leader ability. Um, you're probably going to see a mix of different bounties, like um, like top target, for instance, uh, just at the, the top of my head, uh, or enticing rewards, something that helps you um, gain card draws just from killing people. Um, it it could be really good, so I like it a lot. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see like um, if there's going to be more card draw because like there's like mission briefing right from set one that like no one played you know spend three resources yeah, mission to draw two cards. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's interesting. I I, I will uh, we'll we'll see if his uh, leader side action ability actually does much. Uh, but. Man, also, just he's a four six on five, which is scary if you happen to have six more cards because something catastrophic happened. He's a six six for five, uh, with saboteur, but also like just slapping the dark saber on it, right? Just now he's yeah. a seven nine, right? Or yeah, eight nine, eight nine. So it's like gross. And if you have six or more cards, now he's a ten nine <laughs> with saboteur. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's nice that you know you get more Mandalorian support. Uh, there's uh, you know a fair bit of Mandalorians in red. Uh, yeah, you'll, absolutely. You'll get a couple more in this set, which we'll go over a little bit later. Uh, so, so he's interesting. He seems like a pretty s solid like aggro leader, but like I'm not sure if you want to play him aggro. So I'm not I'm not exactly sure how to evaluate everything about him yet. I mean, yeah, I, I do feel like he is definitely more of an aggro leader. Um, but at the same time, it's like if um, because his ability really depends on you just drawing cards, not necessarily having cards right. in your hand. So, um, I mean, there there is quite a bit of um, of cards that you can really go into and, and doing it. The only downfall for it is that if you lean too much into the ability and not play enough units out on your board, then your opponent can just really control um, the board state a lot better um, by just having more units than you. So probably not going to do as well against uh, like aggro decks, um, but still there's, there's definitely, uh, this, there's definitely going to be fun different ways to fill out like lists with him. So I, I have a, just a weird question, right? Like, do we feel like he might be overstated at five? He's a four, six, like Han's a three, six, right? You know, and Han lets you bring something in and maybe it's maybe because his ability just doesn't feel as good, but I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, Sabbath, you, most of the time you're going to have three cards in hand unless you're being pillaged, right? <laughs> it's like Saboteur just feels nice. Yeah. I mean, like it's his ability is only for himself which i think is what like you know like han 
or even like like Fennec or like Leia, you know, anyone else that comes out on five. It's not necessarily about them. I guess like Boba's a little bit of a different because he regenerates resources, so he's sort of helping it. So like I don't think like the stats are super, super oversatted, anything like that, because it's just like he gets saboteur, which is not nothing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, unless there's like a huge sentinel, it's not really doing a, a crazy amount of stuff. Okay, fair, and that's fair enough. I mean, I, he's also trooper, by the way, right? <laughs> so like, yeah. we 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 know that. Like, I wonder if you're just gonna want to play him. Like, I know you guys said aggro, but like, do you play him in blue as like a tempo deck or a mid range deck? It's almost what it feels like you could do. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to like. uh let him stick around right but uh i don't think he's like an immediate like oh i have to actually kill this guy uh like you with a couple other leaders yeah unless you put a dark saber on him then it's like yeah, oh, yeah. Get rid- <laughs> which yeah, you could totally exactly. do and that's terrifying because again it's an eight nine <laughs> yeah, yeah. i don't know i think he's i think he's pretty good i i'm not like super in love with him how about that I have not started to build with them yet, but yeah, again, it's kind of curious if there's going to be more cards on like the manufacturing plan, right? And like mission briefing or, you know, I, I guess for surrender also draws you cards. So it's not like it's like useless ability. It's just, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's, yeah. I don't know. I think the coming out on five is like the selling point here, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, you can always force choke your own units to draw a card, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, actually, yeah. All right, fair enough, Alex. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's... All right. Just saying. All right. All right. It's the same color. All right. Let's move on to the next leader. Alex, what is this leader? So this is Yoda, who seems really good to me. Um, as a leader, his action is just exhaust him. If a unit left play this phase, draw a card, and then put a card from your hand on the top or bottom of your deck. And I think that gets really silly with a bunch of hero cards you have, like mm-hmm. C-3PO, and yeah. you're my only hope. And because he's blue, Queel. Put a blue card on top of your deck and then attack with Queel. There's a whole bunch of really, really, really silly things you could do. And I guess if you wanted to, you got don't get cocky, right, Tanner? <laughs> <You're doing laughs> we yellow. do now. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. <laughs> it might, maybe that's maybe that card was built for this set. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch of really cool shenanigans. Or like if you have just garb like the card you drew is really good and you just got garbage, you can pot them, pot them the card, right? Like, you know, worse comes to worse, you're just cycling. Um, and then he flips out on seven. He's a four nine. He does have the force and the Jedi and the Republic tag. It's so a four nine with restore two. And then when deployed, you may discard a card from your deck, which is the top card of the deck. If that's not like it's not an ambiguous statement, they always it has that in the rules. So uh, discard uh, top card of your deck. If you do defeat an enemy non leader unit that costs the same or less than the discarded card. So if you set up, you know. Yoda is patient, right? So if he managed to set it up with his ability to like kill, you know, maybe they got like a child sitting there, you could just Yoda put like a four cost on top and then deploy him and then dump the four cost, kill the child sin, and then Yoda's going to town with a four nine restore two body. Yeah, like that ability, like I get it's only on deploy, but that ability seems like really, really good. I mean, if you're. <sighs> If you are like, have a big threat, something like Vader, you are dumping a seven cost, right? Like, if you stack a Luke on there, you are discarding it. That's true. That is which true. Which doesn't feel great. But if you have, like, Chewbacca's and Redemption's and or, like, Obi-Wan's, like, higher costing stuff that you don't mind dumping, and, like, in a pinch is fine. It just seems like you would want something, like, He's going to kill a lower costing unit, right? Because you're not, you're you're only putting a, a high cost card unless if it's a media threat or if you have like two Luke's in hand, right? I mean, and he's a four nine, so that's pretty good. I think I don't. 
Hero just doesn't have the ramp that other decks do, but maybe uh, like somebody in the chat said, like maybe you go for a control um, piece mm-hmm. of this instead, so you don't have to deal with the ramping aspect. You just control, control, and then like massive end game. Like this yeah. could, I could see this deck being an easy soft control deck. I want this to be a mill deck, just as an FYI. Like I want this as a mill deck just because it's thematic. I totally and, think you get to a mill with that for sure. This brings me back to my destiny days, and like I will, I've already like it's funny because Gabe and I were talking because Gabe it was the one that introduced me when he was like six, 15 or sixteen. He introduced me to this Yoda Leia Mill in Destiny, and I hated it. I hated playing against it, and then I learned how to play it, and then I was like, I'm just gonna play this because screw everybody else. That's probably where my love, of, like why I play Control more than anything else, is because of that, right? Like that's just what I fell so- in love with. So here's a question. Is this finally an excuse for somebody to put three copies of Gore in a Yoda deck just so you have a 12 cost? <laughs> kill anything? Does that think better in the discard pile killing a Yoda that it would be playing it? Yeah, you, could, you could put it on top of your deck too before you flip. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my god. That would be so great. Especially if you kill like a crate Dragon with that or, or a Devastator. Again. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, the real question is like, do you deploy Yoda on seven or do you wait I think and you like wait. stack your deck with an eight cost for something like uh an Avenger, right? Or or Snoke, I should say more so. Snoke, uh Snoke or like I, I guess a Palpatine unit or or any of those really high cost ones. That's also it's gonna good. like suffer against um I don't know if they drop like the separatist super tank, right? The Eight eight nine cost exploit three that they probably played kind of cheap, but it's a nine cost, so you're not going to be able to like sack it with Yoda. I think that's going to be a problem that people might not be foreseeing is that like exploit units have a high cost, and you might not just auto kill it with with uh, Yoda. Yeah, I think I think that's good though, right? Because we don't want you don't want Yoda to be some like insane. We don't need another Boba type thing where everybody wants to play just this one character, but he has got he's got like. <laughs> He's got Star Wars approval, right? Like this is a character people want to play. This is this is like this is this is like a Luke. Like this is like people like to play Luke. People like Vader. This is this is Yoda for Christ's sake. Um, uh, I don't know. I I don't I don't know how much time we could spend on Yoda. I could probably spend another half hour talking about Yoda and the deck I want to build. I I really really like Yoda a lot, and like I've been looking for an excuse to play Hero. I don't like playing Sabine. Sabine's fine. It's whatever. But I haven't found a lot of like love in Hero that I've really enjoyed playing. And I think this fits my my itch, which is going to suck because I bet you my I bet you both of my sons will want to play or my nephew, at least my nephew and my one son will want to play. Freaking Hero Yoda, too. So I don't know how we're going to deal with that, but I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait um, for it. And speaking of Yoda, we have a new card called Satine Kreese. And I'm telling you, this is the mill card that I've been waiting for, baby. I'm so mm-hmm. excited for this card. I know nobody else cares that much about it, but it's a Mandalorian official. Um, she is amazing. She's committed to peace so much so that she wants you to discard cards from your deck. She's a four cost legendary zero six mandalorian official um which is hilarious that she's an official too so i know she's official but she's royalty but it's just hilarious um (laughs) anyway her card says each unit including enemy units so like this card just gives everybody this ability they all gain spend an action to uh, exhaust your character discard cards from an opponent's deck equal to half this unit's remaining hp rounded up the rounded up is nuts. Yep. Yeah. 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 Absolutely insane. Yep. I was uh, talking to one of my locals today and I'm just like, hey, do you know what kind of works? You can just put Satine in there and then just entrench her and then mill five. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And what are they going to do? Run into a three nine? Good luck. I mean, please. It's fine. Whatever. But the the mill five by just giving her entrenched or something silly like that is kind of well, bonkers. And, and she avoids fell the dragon, right? Because of that, because she like she's a, she has no like you can't fell the dragon with her. You can rivals fall or vanquish her. That's what you can do. 
you can't even take down her until you start damaging her. Yeah, yeah that's the crazy thing. Is like she's naturally outside of like takedown range on a four drop. So Which who do you think will only happen if you zero attack? What? what do you think she goes in with like the, the best in terms of leader? Like for me, I see this in the raid deck, like hands down, like being really, really effective because she's a really good target for Ray just to constantly buff with her ability. Yeah, and you do kind of want like high health. I mean, I don't think Yoda's a terrible option either, just because you can um, do things like cheat her out with uh, you're my only hope. Yep. Uh, just things like that. Put Mando armor in her. You could. It gives her a shield as well. Yep. It just you know, so three dirty. extra health. Yep. Oh, yeah. I mean, so there's a lot of a lot of cool card. things. This is I my, like this that is my favorite card, by the way. I like that it's reciprocal. <laughs> so if like I'm just like, well, I can't really do much, so I'm just gonna also start milling you. But I was just like, um, I don't know. I kind of wish she was like green. So I don't have to just go against like because like you already have Mill and Vigilance, right? And mm-hmm. Kanan. So I just wish it would like force you to switch colors instead of like no, just Ron just oh, mono Ron. blue the whole time and then just also yeah. continue to mill everything. Yeah. I don't know. I love this card. I love this yeah, card so really much. Cool card. I like it a lot. I'm so we'll, excited we'll for see Mill. How effective it is, but yeah. it seems good. Oh man, I'm excited. Sorry, I'm very excited for the card. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving because Tanner will just sit here and talk about Mel for another half hour or two. Yoda Mel, baby. Um, <laughs> who wants the next one? Who wants, I'll take, wants the next one? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> so we got this uh, slightly warped card, <laughs> Panme Amadala. Uh, she's a two cost yellow and heroic aspect with one attack for uh, for health with Nambu Republic and official on the card. And she reads coordinates on attack, give an enemy minus three for this phase, and uh, pretty decent to start off the game. Right, you know, you're able to uh, get her on there. You're likely to get two more units on there to um, help her uh, get that coordinated ability off when she's able to attack on round two, and she potentially wipe somebody off the board. Um, you're negating three uh, attack from your opponent when you're attacking. Um, or you can just swing into the base and just prevent your opponent from doing any significant damage to your own base or your own units. Um, could be really good. I like, uh, there's definitely going to be some utility for this particular card. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll definitely see her more. Yeah, she seems fine. <laughs> it's kind of weird because you don't want to, like, I guess, play her at the very beginning because if you don't have like a two and a one drop, you're not getting coordinate next turn. Yeah. Um, so it's just like okay, she seems like a, a mid, yeah, a mid mid range card. <laughs> Would you rather play Leia or Padme? I guess I'd rather just play Leia. Yep, same here. Why not both? Nope. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, Leia can ready a resource. You can drop like a chopper or something afterwards if you're really going for it. I I don't know. I think this card is. I don't know. It's meh to me. It's a one attack card. Yeah, but like the you're not trying to do damage with Padme. You are just like, oh, that Sentinel unit over there or whatever. I'm just gonna give it minus three. So when my units live when I attack them, kind of thing. Like my I preserve my clone troopers because it gets minus three attack. I guess. I guess I can see it. It's kind of like Jetta City. I, I guess I would equate that to. Fair enough. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I per- personally, I'm not super impressed with this card. I think it's pretty meh to me. Well, up next, we got uh, Duchess's Champion. And I, I'm not sure if grammatically that's how you how you do a possessive Duchess, but we're, whatever. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need the extra ass. You just need the apostrophe at the end. Um, so it's just a double blue four cost ground unit it is a one eight mandalorian and is when your opponent ha- uh, controls three or more units uh this unit came sentinel so probably works pretty well with satine right if they have that's it's eight l uh you're not really he's not there to 
punish the people walking into him. They're, he just kind of gets in the way and they're not going to die. So he kind of preserves his sentinel status. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of a lot to go through. He's Mandalorian, so we can slap the other Mandalorian cards on him. He seems okay. I mean, like, for me, if you pair this with Duchess and just make sure you just have two units, you don't want Sentinel on it and then just keep on buffing it its health and then just keep on milling your opponent's deck. Like, that, that could be good. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's just like, it's fine. I just feel like it's not doing retaliatory damage, so it's just like, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it seems fine in Ray, right? Like, if you're doing like a mono blue Ray, you bump it off to 2 9, then like a 3 10, which is kind of obscene. And I, I just feel like it's there to like kind of enable a mill by making it harder to get the Satine. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I, what presumably you'd be doing because you're barely attacking with them. Yeah. I, I actually kind of like this card. I, I, I think like for this, for the next set meta, I think this card is is very playable i don't it's think i'd pay droids. six yeah it's very good against droids like <laughs> oh you gotta run it into my mine. Right. Yeah. until it just loses sentinel and you're like never mind <laughs> that is true that's hilarious you have five droids two of them run into it and then it doesn't nobody cares anymore yeah it's just uh, it's i'm always weary of things that you know your opponent has agency for the effects of your card so like if they're not going super wide or if like they they do it in a, a specific correct way like just don't get sentinel with them yeah that's why base is not in my opinion base is just like kind of lost some some of it because you have to have the initiative so if you don't have a deck that claims initiative now you're just like base is a dead card and blah 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 so i don't know i kind of agree with you i don't think i i think this is a good card for this type of a set but i don't think it's going to be insanely impactful personally I think it leans too hard into the mono blue. I'm going to mill you out strategy for it to like do much outside of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to let Alex have a double one. You can have unlimited power. I know that's like <laughs> you're super excited about that card. So am I super? I just think it's cool because it's unlimited power and that's funny to me. I don't think it's great. But anyways, uh, so unlimited power, a force uh, card. It is a six cost double red uh, dude. Four damage to a unit, then do three damage to a second unit, then two damage to a third unit, and finally one more damage to a fourth unit. Note that that does not say enemy unit. So if they only have like two uh, two units, you are hitting yourself <laughs> because the lightning is just everywhere. It's unlimited power. I just like it because it's really cool. It even goes I don't think space. it's good for a legendary. Um, but we'll see. I mean, if if go wide decks are incredibly popular and you hit six resources and you're running mono red, at least you can kill four units. I, yeah. I guess. I don't know. I agree. It with might be think... interesting with Mace Windu. Uh, if you're doing like a double red Mace Windu deck and ju who just does more damage to people who are already damaged. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, uh, we'll see. So, question for this one here. So, uh, objectively speaking, right, assuming that you're you're paying an out of aspect cost just for the extra red, is this better than Super Laser Blast? No, no, I mean, <laughs> not it at doesn't all. kill your own units, I guess. No. But, it well, could though. It could. Yeah, I mean, it could if you <laughs> set it off. Like, yeah, that's the problem with it, right? You just have too much power, so you just hit everything. Which... <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> cool and grit, I guess. If you have grit and you also want to kill their stuff. Yeah, that's true. I just like that they made a card called Unlimited Power and also Palpatine. Oh yeah. I know. Now you gotta figure out how to get this in the red pelt deck, Alex. That's your goal. Yeah, mono red palp aggro. Let's go. No, you're Absolutely. just gonna pay you're gonna pay eight resources, baby. That's what you're gonna do. I know it's uh, it's uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, hey, if there's any card that lets you play force cards for cheaper or something, maybe. I do think the the text underneath it that says all damage is dealt simultaneously is hilarious. So that means you get to kill all their units before any when defeated triggers happen. Period. All 
all damage like that is dealt simultaneously, like overwhelming barrage. Yeah. So I just like that. I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I like that as a caveat, but I still think this card is trash. The reminder but, text is just telling you, Hey, this is an actual rule. Please make sure you do it correctly. Yeah, well, this is, I, I still feel the card is kind of trash. I will tell you, I, I, I will, I will take a hyperspace foil of this card though. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you'll pay like $8. Yep, and I'm okay yeah. with that. I'll I'll have I'll have three of them then at that point. <laughs> nice. I mean, again, like if a mono red thing, maybe like a Mace Windu deck or something, and you're going against a go wide deck, it might not be a bad sideboard card. We'll see. Yeah, well, we'll see. it really kind of depends on what you're what the meta is shaping up to me. Maybe you're trying to run like. I don't know, a whole bunch of blood sports bombing runs and unlimited powers and just be like, I don't play units in this deck. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess like in a Bosk in a Bosk blue deck, you could play it for eight. It actually might not be bad in a Bosk blue deck. There you go. There you go. There's there's like you the one what? deck that I could see just to wipe their board. It's just like another board wipe. Yeah. You could just play super laser blast for eight. Well, now you got fucking <laughs> you now you got six super laser blasts, Alex. Okay. So I'll take that batch up all day. All right. Anyway, let's move on to the ATTE Vanguard. It's a eight cost Republic vehicle walker. It's got restore three and when defeated, you get to create two clone troopers. It's a six nine ground vehicle walker. Um, I do actually love these tanks like in, in the show, like these tanks are amazing to watch uh, move. Um, I think this is like, this is an okay. Like it's nice to see like, this is hero aspect only. So you can play this in any hero deck. Um, I don't know if I'm playing this a lot, but the restore three is kind of nice. Um, just that piece of itself kind of makes this like, I mean, you think Luke's a restore three, right? And he's a seven. This has, a little bit better stats than Luke, and it gives you two clone troopers. Um, when it dies, I I don't know. Is the implication I, that like the pilot and the gunner just bails out of the tank as it blows up, and that's why you get two? Clones? <laughs> 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 no, no, they're pulled from it by Anakin or Ahsoka. One of the two. It's Ahsoka. It's not Anakin. I'm sorry. It's always Ahsoka. Ahsoka is the one pulling them from the tank. She's like, no, 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 we can't have these guys die here. Anakin's like, well, so the nice thing about this is that this feels like a better version of the reinforcement Walker, uh, which is the green aspect only, Um, you know, because you're constantly having uh, have the ability to uh, do that restore three to your base, which is pretty critical once you get if you get to that eight costs. Uh, part of the game there and it has the same attack and and defense stat line on there um and then the added bonus of just creating two additional clone trooper units when it gets defeated um i mean that's that's pretty great um so i think this is something that's definitely going to see play for um some of the more um probably probably see a lot of play on blue i would say um you know decks that just help control the land so you get those big units out this just keeps your base alive um and helps you bring other big units down the way and your opponent has to deal with this particular uh unit until uh, unless you know you they risk losing the game just because you're constantly healing yourself so it does seem like a menace in limited formats (laughs) yeah oh yeah like that just hard to out at nine health and it's restore three and it's six and then when it dies it gives you tokens yeah um i'm i'm unsure if this is like really good or just like okay i think we'll have to see how the decks shake out but it seems good yeah but not i'm not like overwhelmingly good just it seems very solid and then yeah. versatile because it's just a heroic aspect. So like whatever deck, like, you know, if you're running yellow, blue Han, <laughs> you know, drop this down. Mm-hmm. Yellow, blue Han. <laughs> All right. JJ, what about the next one? What about Ahsoka's Padawan lightsaber? And is that even the right color? Did uh, they get yes, color correct? Is- 
It is the right color, yes. Yeah, so this is the uh, the one cost the heroic Ahsoka's Padawan lightsaber. It reads attached to a non, uh, vehicle unit when you play it. If it's attached to Ahsoka Tano, you may attack with a unit. Um, that's very key because you don't have to attack with Ahsoka. You can attack with any unit that you have available on your side there. And then it gives uh, the the wearer of this uh, to um, plus two attack on this here. Um, I would say this is actually pretty good. Um, it's a, a nice way to um, just deploy this on Ahsoka and then allow one of your uh, probably stronger units to go in and attack. A uh, pretty good way to have a um, have a unit like lead the way and clear out space if you need to, or just go in and just hit the base really hard um and for one cost uh it's pretty good it's also um pretty decent cost for general grievous um if he wants to equip this as part of his lightsabers um but yeah it, it could be uh, a fairly solid option for a one cost just to attach on yeah i mean it's not bad because it is giving out two extra attack for one so that's not bad in an aggro deck, especially because if you attach it to Ahsoka, you get to attack. So I see what they're going for. I'm just not sure if it's um, incredible. I mean, it's, it's two extra attack for one cost. Yeah. So worst comes to worst, it's a minor buff, right? So it's okay. Seems okay. I think this is really good for Ahsoka only, but for anyone else. Yeah, for Ahsoka. So, so like... That's it's really great for her. <laughs> like this is an amazing card for her. So, and it doesn't matter which Ahsoka you put it on, right? So, right. All right, let's move. Let's keep moving because the next one I'm super excited about is Grievous's wheel bike, baby. We had this in Destiny. I'm so excited for this. I love. Yeah, I love Grievous's wheel bike. They <laughs> okay. This I will have a Grievous deck that I play just because it's fun. Whether it's competitive or not, I'm not going to care. Just so I could run this stupid effing card. Um, <laughs> it's a four cost villain plus three plus three. While playing this upgrade on General Grievous, it costs two less to play. You cannot attach it to a vehicle, thank God. And it is it's attached unit gains overwhelm. It's a four cost. It's a two on, on Grievous. This is a two cost three, three. So you get one turn, baby. You get one turn until the rivals fall you. There you go. <laughs> like right where rivals <laughs> fall is good for it. You can play this on Grievous, his flip turn. I don't know. I think outside of maybe Grievous or the Grievous unit, I don't know how good this really is. Um, it's just a three, three and it's a four cost. So it, it kind of sucks, but um, and it doesn't synergize with his unit very well, right? Like his unit wants to have lightsabers, not this. It still does. It just makes him a seven-seven. It does. It, which you're is right. Scary yeah. And, resources. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. You, you can play that on you know turn four if you want. Both of them on turn four. So I don't know. It's. I think this is a really good card for Grievous again. But this, just. I'm sorry. Like, just being able to have Grievous ride around on this thing. Like on while you play, just be like, all right, Grievous, get on your bike, baby. Let's go. Let's go. We're gonna kill some things. This seems really good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it almost has the same stats as you know Dark Saber. Almost. Um, you know, you're just getting one less attack. Um, it is definitely much better on Grievous, uh, but just getting overwhelmed, especially if you could put on a unit that just deals a lot of damage, uh, could potentially be nice. But that's a that's a big if. So, yeah. So uh, let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's keep I'll, I'll take the next one. There's here, no reason so. to delay. I'll take encouraging leadership, I guess. Tragically, uh, it's a three cost green event. Uh, give each friendly unit plus one plus one for this phase. And uh, I guess just remember that if you play units after you play this card, they do not get the plus one plus one because they were there. <laughs> Even though they're there now, they weren't there yeah. when we were encouraging them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they they missed the meeting there. <laughs> they missed the memo, baby. Also, um, that's Audi Galia, right? In yes. the, the picture. Yes. Look at me knowing people. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, it seems okay. Like uh, green seems to be pretty going wide, right? Like if you're going to do some sort of uh, clone synergy with like Cody and Rax and all that stuff, it seems like a solid pairing for that. But that's about it. It just goes with the other. Hey, attack pattern Delta gives someone three. You know, plus three, plus three, plus two, plus two, plus one, plus one. Moment of Glory gives this person plus three, plus three. Just seems like, oh, cool. They're building a stack of those. Maybe those will be useful eventually in the future. <laughs> yeah. I think that's all I have to say about that. I'm not sure if you guys have anything else to say. Nope. Let's yeah. just move on. That I think that card's yeah. trash. So I, I won't play yeah. that card. Same. So next one here is the uh, three cost for part of the card in 70 coming uh, with just a single green aspect cost with three attack for health. Um, kind of sad that it has no restore value whatsoever. Apparently they waited until they went out of commission uh, and joined the rebels in order to uh, get some restore. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's about it. Yep. <laughs> I actually like this card a fair bit. I think just a three, four space unit for three is just good. Especially because it's not bound to a heroic or villain aspect. Like, yeah, it's kind of weird, right? It's, it's good. Like, I, I like it. I think it's just a really solid body. Yeah. Like, like especially, like, with ECL and stuff like that. Like, we used to be able to ECL out the Star Viper. Now, you like, that one heals, I guess, if you have initiative, which is conditional. But, like, this one you could just ECL out, and it's going to live almost every time in space at the three, you know, resource share. So... I like it. I think it's really good, too. All right, let's move on to drop in. It's a supply card, I guess. Um, it is create two clone trooper two clone trooper token units for four. It's a hero only. The artwork is awesome. They are crashing through a window. That is just like, I don't know. I I would love to own hyperspace foils of this card specifically. Oh yeah. Um, not that I'm gonna ever play it. Um, I guess in my Ahsoka deck I have it, so I'll play it in my Ahsoka deck. There you go. Um, it, to me, it feels like they stole the idea from like Ubisoft Rainbow Six uh, <laughs> for troopers going through a, a breach and clear. Uh, but yeah, I, I would love to see a uh, a foil for that card because the artwork is just probably the best in in Sewer right now. All right, I'm gonna message Xander after the show tonight. I'm gonna be like, hey, can you give us the preview for the drop in hyperspace foil card? <laughs> I just want to see it too. I agree with you. It's interesting that like this and another card we're going to reveal uh, very, very shortly that they're just creating like, hey, yeah, clone troopers, they cost two essentially to make them, you know? Yeah, I can respect that. It's nice to have cards that just be like, well, here's some token units. I'm going to create my coordinate right now kind of thing. Like you, you need those in a token unit set. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, again, I think it builds into what we're trying to do. And we, we, we said that we, that was a question we said at the beginning of the month, right? Right. Was how are we going to produce all these tokens? Well, here you go. I, well, I'll do, I'll do the droid development deployment one. It's the exact same thing, except for it's a two cost to play two battle droids. There you go. It's the same thing as the other one. Uh, we saw very similar on both sides. I will tell you, I played this in my grievous deck and it, it works pretty well. <laughs> grievous. So, um, I had to play two things, give one of them Sentinel, give you a middle finger. It's kind of fun. So, JJ, yeah. what is subjugating Starfighter, even though I think this card is better than the Solus 1 card we saw, and it's not a Solus 1. Yeah, so. yeah uh, <laughs> kind of surprising that they gave this uh, this kind of a better ability. So it's a four-cost uh, subjugating Starfighter with just green aspects, so you can put it in any uh, deck that you want. Uh, so it comes in with three attack, three health, uh, separatist vehicle fighter. Uh, it comes with ambush. And when played, if you have the initiative, you can create a battle droid token. Uh, so definitely really strong, actually. Uh, this can definitely be an answer to um, to when somebody plays a, uh, a lurking tie phantom. Um, you can easily knock that out really quick and still have a battle droid token left over after you play that card. Um, I think it's a really strong card for uh, for for a cost just to ha have that ambush aspect uh, in a starfighter uh, can be really, really good. I like it. Yeah, I mean, it seems fine. Like, you know, three, three ambush is fine in space. Yeah. And you get a battle droid if you have I'm initiative. I'm not sure if I'd carve out space in a deck for this. <laughs> Like if I'm having, 
if I'm like uh, heroic, right? I feel like I just have a bright hope instead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I'm running green and I don't know, it's like I'm, it has a place. It's just I'm not sure where it's at. But it, again, it doesn't seem bad. Like a three three ambush space seems super normal and totally fine. And you know, bonus battle droid if you actually have the initiative. All right, so let's move on to the next set. Alex, you're up. Um, I got Dendup's Loyalist. It's a two-cost red card. It's a 2-3 with Overwhelm, and it's got Fringe and Trooper traits. So we get Trooper Synergy. It's a 2-3 for two with Overwhelm. Sure, fine. Not bad. Not great. Take it or leave it. See what we can do to buff it. Yeah, I like it in in my mall deck, but that's about it. I already yeah, have I mean, overwhelm. <laughs> Moff Gideon, and then add in uh, what's his face that buffs troopers uh, for a green empire um, take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's other troopers energy. It seems fine. Like uh, there's spots where it's just like cool. I would want more two drops uh, that aren't garbage. And this is a two drop that's not garbage, but it's not great. So you're not going to like start out a deck with this, but it, it's a good filler if you're like, you need two drops. Mm-hmm. The next one we have is a droid starfighter, um, which I don't, I didn't know that's what those were called. Um, so yeah, I called them, I just called them vultures. So I don't know why they're called this. I'm very sad. I don't have a card that lets us land on an obstacle. Uh, X wing thing. <laughs> Uh, it is a one cost one two separatist droid vehicle fighter that has saboteur for whatever reason that you're gonna like do one damage through a sentinel I guess like I it's yeah I, this is so good look this is consideration for my watt deck by the way but like I don't know like I just it's also a droid for grievous yeah. I guess yeah it's, it's a super cheap, cheap. Uh, exploit fodder too right I mean one that's true it is exploit fodder. I think of Pelp when I think of this like more than anything else, though, because and like you can swing in with it if you're using it for X White, like you can swing in with it because of the saboteur, so you don't get like a useless attack into a sentinel. Like you can actually just hit for one and then kill it off. That's yep. about the best case scenario I can think of. Yeah, yep. it's whatever. JJ, tell us about a super battle droid, I guess. Yeah, so it's a three cost, uh, the only aspect four attack, at three health with separatist droid and trooper. Uh, pretty strong for what it can do um, for a three cost, and definitely it's going to see some play in a lot of different decks. So it's really good. Um, I, I did want to mention before, by the way, for the droid starfighters, that you could still technically make it stanch, like the card face up, if you want to. <laughs> So, I mean, nobody's going to stop you. Nobody's going to call the judge to say, hey, it should be flat on the board. But, yeah. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to buy I'm going to buy some stands just to do that. Oh, you're killing me. That's hilarious. Can I buy can I bring my asteroids too from from X-Wing and put them underneath? Yes. It? Make give it plus one the uh, health right for, <laughs> for standing on it. No, man, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, super battle droids seem fine they're troopers they're droids they're four threes for threes which is good but you kind of want it the other way like you want the three attack four health but can't complain yeah. right like it seems fine it's just straight villainy so we can slot them in wherever you need them yeah this is really good for grievous too because it's a droid so you can give this sentinel and it kills the things that have four health right like yeah. that's I, that's the idea behind this that's what this is built for and that would be my assumption yeah it's really cool i like i, li- I like this I like this card, but I don't know. It's it's very meh. All right, Alex, you're next. Hey, look, they finally named these things. So I know. it's an Eda 2 light interceptor, unlike Anakin's interceptor or whatever they called it. Uh, so it's a five, uh, five cost heroic. It is a 3-4 with restore 2 in space. Republic vehicle and fighter traits. It's okay. I don't think it's going to get a tremendous amount of play unless something really, really needs restore. So I don't think like, this is a good card. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so either. It seems okay. Yep. Like, if you're running Ray, you might as well run those stupid clown cars. 
right? Just buff it yeah. up to a three three. So like bleh. having restore is fine. Man, five cost. Maybe just make it a two four, make it four. I don't know. It's okay. At best. All right. The next one is B1 Security Team. It is a two cost yellow separatist droid trooper, which is a three one and it has Sentinel. I actually really like this card. Um yeah. I, I think this card is pretty good, especially in yellow. That I got a two cost. I this is like a Greedo, but has Sentinel. So, um, at minimum, you have to kill it. So it would be nice if it was a three two though, because this is gonna like this is gonna die to a st- <laughs> like a droid can run into <laughs> another battle droid can kill this. <laughs> I mean, that kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of like you can't have it a three, two for two or something. Uh, that's silly. Yeah. Right. I mean, honestly, this is uh, I actually I think this is great for like Boba decks uh, because you're likely to remove a unit that goes into it and uh, just triggering Boba's ability. Um, so it's probably going to see some play over there along with maybe some Gamorrean guards just to add in even more Sentinel <laughs> to the list. Uh, but yeah, definitely really great for its cost for uh, a really early Sentinel unit. Yeah, I think it's a good turn one play. Yeah, yeah. I like. I, I really do like this card a lot. So it, it's. Very, it, I, I really do think this is a good card, and I think that it this will definitely see play quite a bit. And I really like this in... Uh, in a limited format, maybe, because, oh, man, having these things so they can't swing into your base is super awesome. JJ, what's the next one? Uh, so we got the three cost merciless contest tactic card. It comes in, uh, reads, each player chooses a non-leader unit they control. Defeat those units. Um, kind of a niche card, right? Because you can potentially have it on a on a play where your opponent brings out a very big card and it's their only card, and you have a cheap token unit um you can sacrifice that cheap token unit to have uh have your opponent discard or destroy their big card that they just played out um could be pretty good i i don't think this is a good card i hmm. guess interesting i think it's okay like if they don't have a bunch of like it might be an interesting side sideboard if they're not like a go wide deck right um and they're just trying to like tempo play like it's you know kill one of your droid units or whatever to choose one of their guys to you know they they kill one of theirs so you can get into like a a wonky trade like really good advantage for that that's about it and can you play this while you have zero units um no because you can't control zero units well like i think the stipulation for um Defeating those units is if you both choose one. Okay. Gotcha. So I guess you can play it for three with no units. It just doesn't do anything. Which is not what you want. Yeah. I, I, I don't like this card at all. I think like we see the like we have that altering terms we never use. Um, you know, like you could play um what is the father card? I am your father. Yeah, I am your yeah, father. I am your father. Yeah. yeah, it's a three cost that does seven damage, or you get to draw cards. Like this feels, I could just play that, and I could pick the unit I want, or and then I get three cards out of it. This one's like, oh, you're gonna pick a battle droid, or I don't know. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna pick K2SO. There you go. You want to do this? I'll just pick K2SO and do another three damage to your base. I'm gonna choose my phantom. Yeah, or I'll choose my. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't like this card. I think this for three hey, cut. Co- you could a- choose your phantom. It still affects you though, because you know it's not enemy, but it's fun. If it was a one cost, this would be a good card. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. All it's, right. It's okay at best. <laughs> I don't know who's next. I don't remember where we're at. Is it, it me? Matter. It's me. Is it me or is it? It's me. I'll take it. I guess I'll, I'll take in guess. pursuit. <laughs> Uh, it's a yellow zero cost uh, exhaust a friendly unit if you do exhaust an enemy unit it's more zero cost yellow cards for Dr. Afra. <laughs> yeah that's and true and Thrawn. Fennec well you don't want in Thrawn what are you going to exhaust for zero you know, droid token <laughs> yeah yeah why not Thrawn with droids yeah, yeah I can see that happening so, <laughs> I like the if you do things so you actually have to exhaust one of your guys 
Um, again, it's kind of like the previous card, right? The Merciless Contest. It's it's just like, hey, you can effectively trade like a battle droid for something bigger, like a Devastator for an extreme example. <laughs> On turn three. I don't know. This is this this artwork, by the way, is the one that's on the uh, mat too. I'm pretty sure that this is this is the same artwork on the mat. It's really, it's really good really artwork. Good, really good uh, art. Yeah. That scalp like trooper man. He's really he's really intense there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next one is called Independent Senator. It is a one cost separatist official. It's a zero four. It is action, spend two resources, and exhaust. Then you're allowed to exhaust a unit with four or less power. So basically, you spend... It's like the... uh, Whatchamacallit? The uh, fire spray ability, but on a ground unit? Yeah. That only works with four costs or less? The most important thing is that as a one cost yellow official. So if you're running yellow Palpatine, you have Emperor's <laughs> Royal Guards active. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's all the right. Old that's fair. Like it seems okay at best. Like what do you like? You're spending two extra resources to exhaust something with four less power. Like mm, it doesn't do any attack. It's just a zero four. I get that's a one cost, but. Uh... I can just run Grievous and make a droid. That's a one cost droid, you know, Sentinel, so that you waste your your attack with four power into that. I don't know. Yeah. It's blah to me. Blah. I'll never run that card. I don't think again, maybe outside. Yeah, maybe outside of uh, you're right. Maybe outside of a yellow pelt. But yeah, I think we talked too much about Pell. All right, JJ, come on, tell it, bring us home, baby. <laughs> All right, so we got 11 cost Republic defense carrier with the green and heroic aspect uh, coming with a 6 7 uh, Republic vehicle capital ship. This unit costs one less to play for each unit controlled by an opponent who controls the most units. Um, that's a word salad and a half, and it comes in with Sentinel on here. Uh, probably really good in that blue Yoda leader deck, right? 11 cost, then you're probably able to get this out for a little bit cheaper. Um, if your unit, uh, if you're, if you have a lot of good units, uh, or a lot of units on your board, um, definitely we'll see some play. Um, not too keen on the six attack, seven defense. Uh, it's pretty low for, for that cost. Um, especially when you have things like, you know, Devastator and Relentless and stuff, uh, available, uh, for your opponents, um, could see some play, um, but unless you can put out a ton of like units out there to outnumber your opponent, um, it's going to be tough to pay 11, uh, for this ship to come out. No, oh, you want your opponents to have a ton of units, JJ, like, cause it's, it only costs less if your opponent for the opponent oh yeah, it's fair, yeah. Fair. so like yeah. if they control it's five units i think it's a six drop six seven yeah. space unit sentinel it's sentinel. Sure. yeah but you're probably losing the game <laughs> i want to be the one guy who's just like yeah i let my opponent get to 11 11 units and i dropped this for free <laughs> and then i lost immediately next turn <laughs> 11 battle droids on the table <laughs> uh, it's okay i think this is um, an okay card Hey man, if you're going wide, that is not a bad card. Like if your opponent's going, yeah. like if your opponent's going wide, so like legitimately, like a five unit. If there's a bunch of like true like tokens, right? Like five or six units out, it's not bad for dropping it for five or six resources. Especially yeah. with the, the sentinel space is a really nice thing. Yeah, I think the Sentinel thing is just the bigger part, and it's a seven. It, it's got seven health on that thing, so it's a big booty for for that. We we aren't we haven't seen a lot of them. Let's say for six resources that have that big of a booty. So yeah, tragic when they play Wale, but you know we're good. <laughs> All right, the next one is called Brain Invaders. I don't remember this episode, so um. It's a (laughs) four cost, two, four fringe neutral card. Each leader loses all abilities except for epic actions, and they cannot gain abilities. Man, I want to say this is really good, but I just don't feel like it's going to be. I don't because like Boba doesn't give a crap about this. I mean, he does like his leader side. 
if it's unit side and he kills the brain invaders, yeah, he'll get the two resources back. But it's also nice to have something like this in the game in general to like have some sort of check if something gets out of control. And also to massively disrespect the one local who's playing a Hera deck because he just completely <laughs> ruined their entire life. Because they have to pay the extra aspects for their Spectre cards now. <laughs> oh, that's great. But it is, it's interesting. Um, again, if you can like put it behind some Sentinels and you don't care about your leader ability, which is kind of wonky. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool in Kylo for what it's worth. Just bring him out and he's a five regardless. Yeah. Uh, it's just nice to have something like that. I yeah, we'll we'll see if it's like super necessary. But is it now? I mean being able to turn off uh some of the aggressive leaders abilities like you know um uh Sabine uh you know constantly pinging your base or turning off Ray from being able to put out uh experience out constantly um there is some utility for it because you're you're um if your opponent is building around that particular leader's ability being able to turn it off um especially around the critical uh like turns uh, where you're able to play this um could could definitely mess up your opponent's tempo um especially when you're looking at like red han that loves to um like hurt units to bring it in faster um, if you're able to slow down that tempo, uh, this absolutely can be uh, brutal. Um, even Bosk, for instance, that that he relies on uh, just dealing damage to those um, bounty units. So, all right, JJ, what's the next one? So we got OC Sobek, Warden of the Citadel. Uh, so he comes in as a six cost green aspect with three attack, six uh, health with exploit three when played. Uh, this unit captures an enemy non-leader ground unit with cost equal or less than the number of resources paid to play this unit here. So he relies on you to not use the exploit in order for you to uh, capture a unit that's six cost or less. Um, I mean, you could exploit one to two cards and, you know, capture a lesser unit, but kind of feels like a waste at that point. Um, but I just wish his... his um, his health was just a little bit higher just so you can um, at least survive a bit, uh, especially at, at a six cost when you're playing him. Um, there's so many units at that cost that can easily wipe out a six cost. Um, I mean, sure, if you're putting him behind a couple of Sentinels with shields or something, could see some play on there, um, but it's, it's a little tough. Um, there are better capture options available if you're really going for like a capture deck, um, but I might see some play. It might be fun in like a, a sealed event, but that's about it. You can capture a wrecker or a Poe just naturally, which I guess has some sort of merit, but so can a discerning veteran for something that's cheaper. Exactly. Yeah. It seems okay. It might be interesting in like a really heavy bounty deck, but uh, that's cooking a lot. Yeah. All right, Alex, tell us about Count Dooku. Ah, it's Count Dooku. He is a eight cost red villain, six six. So four separatist and Sith. He is exploit two and overwhelm. And when played, each unit you exploited while playing this card, you may deal damage to an enemy unit equal to the power of the exploited unit, which is really cool. Uh, if you take something like the best card ever designed for this game, specifically the B1 attack platform, uh, our exclusive card, um, and just sack it with exploit, that's five damage to something. Yeah. I think this is good. This feels more legendary than some of the legendaries we got, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it seems good. Um... It's it's iffy because you are sacking units that have high attack if you're trying to deal out the damage. Like, you know, obviously you can sequence it in a way where like, oh, cool, you do the damage to the base first and then you could drop Dooku and then do it to you know other units. And uh, but like each each exploit thing, right, is. 
Yeah, so it's for each exploited. So I don't think it has to be the same guy. So, I, I mean, it seems fine. Uh, six, six for eight's not great, but that's why the exploit two is there. You can play him for four, uh, which can get really silly. Yep. And he's got overwhelm. Seems pretty nice. And he's force and it's red. He's a fallen Jedi, baby. I like this card a lot, actually. Yeah, for sure. I think this card's a really good card. It's made me go back to my help red deck and think about how I can fit him in there, <laughs> which I should stop doing because <laughs> I have too many red palp cards, but it feels like it. All right. The last one for tonight is Bo-Katan Kreez. She is a death watch Lieutenant, a two cost. She's villain now, right? Which is, I didn't know that. I don't understand this. She's a villain. card now. Yeah. She, she was part of death watch in the beginnings of uh, the Clone War series. Uh, so technically, yeah, she was a villain to start off. Okay, fair enough. She's a 2-3 Mandalorian trooper. While you control another Mandalorian unit, this unit gains Overwhelm and Saboteur. And then on top of that, while you control another trooper unit, this unit gains plus one. Uh, Plus one attack, sorry. Yep. Uh, I think for a two cost, this is a really good card, actually. (laughs) Like, this is a two drop, here you go. Like, It's a 2-3 that can buff itself to a 3-3 three, three with another trooper and like overwhelm and saboteur are fine because it works well with Mandalorian stuff. Seems really good in like a Gar Saxon deck. Put the Mandalorian armor on there. Now she's what a 3-6 with a shield and you got another trooper out there so it's 4-6 yeah. shielded overwhelm saboteur. Yeah. For four. <laughs> yeah, honestly, so. like she she it, this card feels like this should have came out last set, you know, with all the other Mandalorian cards that we got out because you're absolutely right. Putting this in a in a blue Gar Saxon deck would be absolutely great, especially with all those Mandalorian troopers that can buff other Mandalorians. Um can be absolutely great. And she's a great candidate for Darksaber too, as well, if you're able to get uh the, the Darksaber onto her. It'd be really interesting as well if you wanted to create like a Mandalorian Grand Inquisitor deck. Oh, yeah. Because you already have like the Mandalorian Troopers, right? The three six. So that just naturally works. Yeah. And even if you get the buff for the other trooper with bow, it's still three attacks. So it works with Grand Inquisitor. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I didn't think about that. I, I do wonder if that's something that could happen. And, like, you can pl- play blue, like Grand Inquisitor, right? Because mm-hmm. your Mandalorians yeah. are red already, so, like... Absolutely, yeah. Seems interesting, especially if you can slap on, like, Mandalorian armor, so it's, like, whatever, the two damn... So. Yeah. I like it. The last thing that we had is the Obi-Wan uh, showcase. There you go. I don't know. Seems okay. It's, yeah. People are really into it because it's the original Obi Wan. Blah blah blah. I, whatever. I don't. Like, I don't. I don't care. like his face. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think this looks good personally. So it looks like they a, tried to make a legally different, you, uh, you know, Ewan McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I look trashy. It's just like I don't know why. Like the the face just looks so off to me. Maybe because it's that angle, I'm hoping it's that way. But it's just like uh, it kind of looks like ugh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, Jesus. it's like a Lego yeah. head. Yeah, whatever. It's <laughs> it's not my it's not my thing. Uh, if I get one, I will happily trade it to you for a mall. There you go. You want that, baby? I got a mall. I I just need a mall. <laughs> I need a couple of mall. I want two mall showcases. Is what I want now. But that probably will not happen in my future. So anyway. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. It was a little bit longer of an episode, probably my fault. Um, I shouldn't have done what I did on Saturday. So that way I have anything to talk about. So <laughs> how dare you have fun? I will take, I'll take the blame for that. Um, yeah, it's definitely a longer episode tonight. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. We will be back next week on Sunday. Um, hopefully with some more spoilers and probably a little bit more of a lighter episode. I'll kind of give, you know, like I, I, maybe we'll have a Yoda deck by then. Um, maybe we'll just pick a, like some other kind of fun things and go through like another fun deck or something like that. Uh, just, just, just to kind of lighten the mood. I don't know. Like, I guess I'm not as excited about PQs cause I'm not going to any more of them. So, 
Um, they're like, I'm now already kind of looking to set three personally um, and what set three has got to offer for us um, in terms of that stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of in that mode now. I know we have two more weeks of peak use and I don't know, maybe I'll go to the one in Indiana. Maybe, maybe I'll buy a ticket, do that. I don't, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Alex, do you want to go to Indiana with me? Hmm. I do love, I, I do want to go to a PQ. I mean, maybe we'll see. We, could, we could put ourselves on the wait list and like, I mean, if you go, then I, at least have a, that? it's in two weeks on the 25th or 26th. Ooh, we'll see. I'll, 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 I'll contact you. All right. Either which way. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us tonight. It was a fun night. Uh, and if you if you want, you could like subscribe. Um, we still have a giveaway that we have to do at some point. So I think we're like a few away from 500. So if you are watching this, subscribe to our YouTube. As soon as I hit 500, I have a Vader legendary card to give away. Like, like and a Grogu card. So Heck yeah. um, I don't know. So I think, I don't know where we're at, but I, I know we're not quite at 583. So. There you go. I need we need seventeen, 17 more. more people, and we'll give it away. So tell your friends. I don't care if you want to listen to the show or not. Just tell your friends. Get seventeen more people, and then we'll give away a couple of cards. Um, hopefully next week. I just really want to do that. I just want to do that. So, um, with yeah. that being said, thank you all. Have a good night, and we will see you on the flippity flop. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for listening.